Right. Hello, friends. Behold my players. A wonderful group of people who are going to play a not-so-wonderful game tonight. Tonight, my friends, we're on a quest to save Flavortown. Tonight, we begin the epic tale of Dungeons, Dragons, Diners, and Dives. Also known as Flavor Town Revengeance Part 2 Electric Boogaloo. Uh, we'll get started in just a second. I'm just going to post some stuff to the old social meds and uh, discords and whatnot. But um, how, uh, how are all of you guys doing tonight? Bang. Ready. Pretty good. Okay. Ready and willing. Very excited. Yes. All right. I'm excited too. And I'm very happy to have all of you at my table. Thank you again very much for... Uh, coming in i know it was a little kind of short notice compared to what i usually do but um like i i thought about this this possibility this concept for a one shot and it wasn't a hope or a dream it was a hunger it was a thirst to run this and i'm very excited uh to have all of you at the table tonight i'm very excited you're live right now right mm -hmm. yeah. it says you're offline still refresh I don't really switch my lights. Oh, thank you. Yes. There we go. All right. Give me just a second to post to a couple other spots here. Uno momento. Oh, Kim, uh, do you want to play again to give us a little background music? My apologies. Yeah. Thank you very much for that. I was ready. You were ready. You were just like on it. Right. And one more spot here. All right. I've posted to pretty much all my peeps on the discords. So is everybody feeling good and ready? Any thoughts, questions, concerns, anything before we begin? Bring it on. Excellent. Ready. Are we looking? Beautiful. <clears throat> oh my god. This is the most ridiculous thing I've ever gone to run, so I'm having trouble getting into the mindset here. So, <clears throat> legend speaks of a forbidden land, a place spoken of spoken. only in old tomes a place that is not more than mere fables spoken by the elders whispered in fairy tales to children to whisk them off to sleep at night of a land known as Vorfall a beautiful place filled with decadent foods of all variety a place that many chefs speak of as being the pinnacle of ingredients and flavor. God damn it. Um, <clears throat> but a place that mysteriously nobody quite knows the way to. At least it was until fate brought six adventurers together. Six adventurers whose may not have been heroes of particular renown throughout the realm. But seasoned adventurers all, who would begin their greatest quest. But it wasn't just combat and adventure that filled your lives, was it? Oh no. It was also your distinguished culinary careers. For it's been said if legend is to be believed, that the land of Vorfall contains the very secrets of flavor itself. It's said that they who master it can obtain the ultimate secrets of cooking. An alluring, enticing reason to go. You are... You're approaching... A vast plain, rolling green fields 
the topography spreading in either direction, with distant mountains off on the horizon. It's a colorful and inviting place, the warmth of the summer sun beating down upon you, but a cool breeze providing welcome respite from the warm rays up above. As you glance around, you can see all manners of large, socky vegetables growing. Rivers and creeks with water so sweet it's almost like honey when you taste it. And all manners of colorful flora and fauna all over. Stepping forward, you take in the sight, the spectacle, and like a shining gem off at the very distant horizon, the colorful buildings of a place that you never thought you'd lay eyes upon. A place only pictured in storybooks. And as you take in this scene, could you please describe your characters? Let's start with Bogart. Right, so Bogart is a tall, slender man in his later years with short silver hair and a scruffy beard. He has a a worn gray tunic that's cut uh, down in a very large v-neck with a, a red vest cast over it. He's got a, a simple brown leather tool belt around his waist, uh, black breeches, and uh, long brown boots. They look like work boots. Um, and in his right hand, he has a lit cigarette that he's just flicking away at. A small gust of breeze blows some of the smoke back to the person standing behind you who happens to be can and uh, my apologies on the enunciation of this uh Aishling? Aishling? can i get that one more time ashling ashling thank you for that mm -hmm. ashling as the smoke kind of goes by you cough a bit waving it away from your face please describe your character ashling is a short changeling who has fair skin and very light colored hair, um, but changelings can change their features at will. So she is able to kind of morph her, um, her skin and her eyes and her hair to different colors. Um, but she generally wears a emerald green tunic and either, um, baggy pants or a skirt depending on her mood um, she's young she's 25 and she is an artist sorry dog um <laughs> <clears throat> so as ashling coughs a bit the smoke blowing in their face momentarily Lolly, you've been looking around at this wondrous sight, the spectacle of the land, and suddenly you hear this coughing that kind of snaps you out of that moment. Please describe your character. <coughs> As I cough. It's got some, a good tan on them. They're a little, they're very tannish. They got some bright white hair, like spiky on top, but this long braid that goes down to their knees. But got just some simple leather armor on and just keeps it really simple like a medium height just uh looking around and like wow i can't wait to try all of this i wonder what this will be and taste like and then looks over <laughs> and it's just like a little confused like why are you coughing in this beautiful space <laughs> And as your gaze sweeps across everything, it falls just for a moment on another of your party members. Cora, can you please describe yourself? Um, she's a very young, flashy Ashmere. She's about um, medium height as well. She's about five six. She has long silver hair with blue streaks in it. Um, she wears her tunic. It's kind of cut to loosely around her top with a tight shirt underneath. Um, and loose pants um, fitted on her bottom. She seems kind of like interested in her jewelry. She's not really paying much attention to anyone around her um, as she's kind of like sitting there and she notices the gaze and she likes to go at people whenever they look at her. Mm -hmm. 
And as this is going on, there's another distracted by the coughing. Gordon, you had a lot on your mind thinking about all of the ingredients that surround you now. Please describe yourself. Oh, bloody hell, is that chicken raw? Remember, you got remember you got paste it with butter and garlic. You know, I mean, you got to put that herbs in there. And he's just, you know, talking to himself and everything. And and honestly, when he walks walks in, you know, he's just like a touch of his hat because he has like a just a regular hat on, and then it turns into a chef hat. And then goes, ah, stand back, I got this. And then uh, same thing with his uh, armor. It just turns into like a chef coat. All he has to do is like touch it. And he looks around and goes. God, this is the best you can do for me? What the hell? And it sits there, and he grabs what looks like an axe, but it's a spork. A huge spork. And it's a strange and foreign weapon that you have strapped uh, kind of uh, to you there. A weapon that catches the eye of our last party member, Rhyme Pib. Why did why, why do I do these things to myself? Please describe your character. Rhymes, uh, short, barely making two feet, even for a kobold. Uh, his snout is short and stumpy. Very odd for um, one of his sort. Effectively. Um, Take what uh, nobility did with pugs and then transfer that onto a kobold. His eyes face slightly too far apart on his head and given any uh, any one moment in time, they're, facing, they're just facing off different directions. Lazily staring about in their own direction, taking in whatever it is they see. Uh, if you were to gaze into them long enough, you could almost see what you think is a spark of intelligence in there, and then you realize it's an eye floater. Thank you very much, Rhyme Pib. That certainly painted a picture. A picture worth a thousand words or a thousand dishes, as you've once uh, encountered some folks saying. It's a strange thing in that you all in your journeys have come to know one another. After all, you've come to the land of Vorfall seeking information, power, that is only whispered rumor throughout many of the kingdoms of the land. Yet there's one unsettling thing, like a tickling feeling lingering in the back of your minds that something wasn't quite right. Because as long as you've all traveled together, and as much as you all seem to have gotten to know one another well enough in these past few months, you remember nothing of your journey to this area. Whether it was to find the secrets of flavor for yourself, to unearth lost mysteries, mayhap a request from a patron, Whatever your reasons were, you remember them. You know why you're here. But the journey here, it's as, as, it's as if you're grasping sand. And the harder you try to remember, the harder you squeeze, the more slips away. Alas, you, can't, you could not be bothered to dwell upon it for too long. For this peaceful moment was suddenly shattered when you heard from a small distance away a scream echoing through the skies of this, of this warm summer morning. As you hear this, what are you going to do? Um, I'm going to look up to the skies and see what I can see. Fantastic. Um, with a passive perception of 13, a cursory glance doesn't reveal... Um, anything of particular note. If you would like, you can roll a uh, active perception to see if you might uh, notice anything. Yeah, let's do it. Uh, 
No. A 22. Oh, yeah, 22. You listen in, kind of cocking an ear up, and you go very, very quiet for a moment. And you can tell from the way the sound echoed, it was a head near a small copse of trees upon the path that you're beset upon. But there were other sounds, footsteps, cruel laughter. Only with your finely tuned ears from several months, years even of adventuring, could you make those out. But there's definitely something afoot. Seems that's something afoot. Sounds like somebody ate something bad. Uh, that's not my cooking. <laughs> Who held me that? I suppose oh. we can go find out and show them how to cook properly. Yeah, it yes. sounds like somebody needs some lessons. Oh, sorry. We could use the views, so we can go. I guess. <laughs> Did everyone get this uh, tiny cobalt that you're supposed to cook, or is this uh, someone else here? Is that an ingredient? He's a team mascot, remember? Oh, oh, okay, okay, I'll, I'll, okay, I'll spare him, never mind. I don't think we're going to get much meat off of him. We'll just let him be. We should see what that noise is, though. Definitely. Sounds like a perfect idea. Is no made for cooking, only to cook. No, I suppose he's a decent cook as well. Excellent. So I'm to understand that you're going to proceed up the path? Yes. yes. Is there any particular way that you would like to go? Um, a marching order or anything like that? Or uh, how, how are you going to proceed forward? I wish to be in the middle somewhere. Jolly good. <laughs> I'll tell you what. If you guys would like, um, perhaps arrange your tokens in the marching order that you would like to be in. I think a couple like of you might have right. left. Okay, there we are. Uh, Bogart's gonna, as he's walking, he thinks for a moment. He's like, hold on, I gotta take a piss. He's gonna walk to the back, do his business real quick while everybody's moving ahead, so he'll pick up the rear. Did he just go behind the... Uh -uh. Well, we're not okay. using that ingredient. Nobody go near that tree. That because. might be his secret ingredient, maybe. Don't have to tell oh. <laughs> That's his secret ingredient. I'm good. <laughs> How did you make it this far? Suddenly, I need you to roll a dexterity save, uh, Boggart. Uh, dexterity. Oh, I suppose I can do that. Oops, I can't do it twice. So oh, you stumble back. Fortunately, you had uh, completed your business, but um, you notice a rustling behind the f leafy ferns at the base of a tree. And you, startled, kind of scamper back a little bit, losing your footing and falling back prone. Oh, blasted creature. What's going on? What happened? I don't know. Something in the shrubs. I'm going to try to stumble back to my feet and brush myself off. You remember, uh, can you roll a knowledge, uh, let's go nature, please. No, Here. arcana. No. Arcana, I can do that. Heh, <laughs> nothing. It's a fat six. <clears throat> there was this strange, illusory image of a person for just a moment. You swear for, and you swear you recalled something, but it's simply not coming to mind. But that's not all that you see. As you're kind of distracted, you're dusting yourself off, and you look back over to the others, and then just to be sure, you kind of look back over just to where you saw that rustling, and your gaze goes beyond that. And for just a moment, you see a wall of cold stone in the center of the forest. And you blink doing a double take. You rub your eyes in disbelief. It's gone. Is something okay? Are you alright over there? No, I'm fine. Are it's you sure you're taking a while for this piss? Yeah, no, no, let's go. 
going to get up and walk back to the group. Pib's going to lean over to uh, guard and go, mm, cots his fly. Oh, that makes sense. Mm. Bloody hell, hurry up. Excellent. So then you guys are going to proceed onward? Yes. 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 Okay. Let me just arrange you guys a little closer and one moment. Um, please take a moment and arrange yourselves uh, oriented the other way. I can probably actually... Perfect. <clears throat> so... You draw closer into this copse of trees, um, like tall, leafy green trees and evergreens kind of inter intermixed throughout this shaded area as the path cuts through the center. And it's there as you draw further that you happen upon a group of what look to be strange, almost puppets. They're kind of covered in different wildly colorful shaggy fur and one of them is seems to be running away from a group of individuals at the far end and they yell ah oh, ah oh, please travelers help us <laughs> they fall to their knees and drop down dead a crossbow bolt sunk into their back fluff spilling out from the open wound oh you can't eat that Never can seen I, anything like I that. Yes, you can. What if, um, can I see where the bolt came from? Which direction it came from? It came from the east. And as you start looking a little bit more, you can see there's a collection of pretty lightly armored, uh, <clears throat> lightly armored individuals brandishing some very crude, rusted weapons. And they've got a couple of these other puppet-like creatures, and they just sink their blades in. You can hear cruel laughter from them as they're cackling. <laughs> Take this, pathetic scum! And they strike another one down. And another one, standing unnaturally taller than the others, broad and muscly, steps forward and says, What's this? Outsiders, huh? What's... What's bringing all of you here? This here is Hell's Blade territory. Wait. His gaze stops and it lingers on Gordon for just a moment. And he, no, no, it couldn't be. <laughs> anyway, what do you want? Are you preparing ingredients? Is that why you're attacking those? Ingredients? He glances back to the others, and they all begin laughing in unison. <laughs> what the hell do we care about ingredients? Only Lord Fier cares about that. We're just here to have a little fun with these things. Why don't you try it out? And he points to another one that's crawling away. You can see a crossbow bolt sinked into its side. It barely has the strength to continue crawling. He says... Killing these things is a whole lot of fun. Give it a try. You'll like it. <clears throat> Looks like you're wasting food to me. You're just killing them for fun. You're not killing them for any other reason in particular? Well, yeah. That's all these things are. Trash to be disposed of. You have no other reason. You eat some. I didn't know uh, someone uh, needed such large muscles to deal with something so small. You must be weaker than you look. Is oh. that given? He steps forward, cracking his knuckles with these resounding... <laughs> you want to start something? I can discard of you just like these. You know that's bad for your joints, right? I'm <coughs> old, but I'm not stupid. You don't crack your knuckles. You're going to have arthritis. My joints are thick and really, really big and strong. My dad says I'm cool. Yeah, your dad's an idiot. Don't make fun of my dad. 
He died three years ago, and that's not socially acceptable, asshole. You did what to your dad? Hey, no, I didn't. I didn't uh, say anything like that. You can kind of hear the people behind him laughing. Let me guess. You stand still and you're invisible too, correct? <laughs> what? <laughs> If you stand still enough, you're invisible too, correct? <laughs> I've had enough of this. He shouts back to the others. All right, boys. These ones apparently want to fight. Let's give them. All right, everybody. Uh, please roll for initiative. Goats. Apparently Bogart wants to fight tonight. Seven. Seven. Okie dokie. <laughs> Do 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 do. Give me. Do 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 do. Do 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 do. Okay. Oh, it added them twice. Give me just a second. Sorry. Roll roll twenty is being a little buggy on me tonight, but that's okay. Here I got tea for you. Beautiful. Okay. And give me just a moment here. <laughs> monkey see, monkey do. Damn. <laughs> okay, um. Oh, wait, I can see. So, uh, let me see here. Cora, can I get, uh, what was your initiative? Seven. Seven. And eight, minus one. <laughs> And Rhyme, <laughs> what was yours? <laughs> rhyme, Pib? Oh, uh, 13. 13? Excellent. Bogart, what was yours? My AC was 13. Oh, no, your initiative. Oh, my initiative is 16. Excellent. Gordon, what was your initiative? 10. Okay. Lolly, what was your initiative? 13. And Ashling, what was your initiative? Six. Okay. Let me just arrange this real quick. So this guy is just, he's just going to charge forward, screaming wildly. Ha! And as that one is charging forward, uh, Bugger, you see an opportunity to act. It is your turn. What are you going to do? <coughs> Give me a sec here. Um, I think from where I'm at, let me measure this out real quick. Oh yeah, easy. Uh, I'm just gonna kind of sidestep here, uh, just to have a nice clear shot. You know, my I'm old. My eyes are they're not that great, but uh, I'm gonna kind of just flick my wrist and throw out an eldritch blast. Excellent. Roll to attack. Which one is the attack? Must be that one. There we go. Oh, only twelve. So, unfortunately, that attack fails as you, you kind of go out and, like, you just, like, kind of reach out, but they're still a little too far, still a little blurry for you. So you yeah. <laughs> unleash the blast and it just harmlessly flies right by their head. Son of a bitch, I knew I needed my spectacles for this. Now I'm just going to end my turn. All Why right. are they not on? I didn't bring them with me. Another one charges forward, grinning wickedly as they brandish an, um, looks like a spear. And in that moment, Lolly, you see an opening to attack a couple of them. It is your turn. Um, Rhyme Pib, you're on deck. It's your turn next. I'm going to, first, I'm going to use my crossbow. I'm going to shoot at that one. All right, please roll to attack. That succeeds. Roll for damage. Eleven. And uh, could you please uh, ping which one specifically were you attacking? This one. All right. One Tell me what happens. Oh, what? <laughs> okay, this is always, uh, that guy looks too confident after murdering. Uh, was it a muppet? Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Okay. <laughs> after murdering muppet and looked too happy, so just. Aims, uh, just blink, and then just watches him fall as it goes right straight through the head. 
And he actually keeps running for a couple of seconds. He's like, huh, huh, you think something like that's going to, to, uh, huh? And just topples over. Beautiful. Is there anything else you'd like Gorgeous. to do? <clears throat> I think you only get one attack at this level, so I think that's about it. Yeah. Yeah. Unless no, it's a bonus I, action. I do have bonus action, but I'm going to end my turn. I'm going to stay where I'm at. Excellent. So, Rhyme Pib. You also see an opening to attack as one of them has just fallen. It seems that this is going down for real. What are you going to do? Seeing everyone else attack the much larger than himself uh, foes, he's going to break out his short bow and take shot, uh, pot shot this guy over here. And um, if you have it set to the select and move, the one that just looks like a mouse icon, if you click and hold, it will ping on the map. Oh. <coughs> Excellent. Uh, please roll to attack. This thing. A 13. Unfortunately, the attack does not succeed. Um, they kind of see you stop and aim, and after watching their comrade drop, they like duck under and you shoot right where their head was. But it was close. All right. Um, would you like to move anywhere or will that be your turn? Um, I think I'll move behind Gordon here. All right. Me and my arrow missed. I don't want to be a uh, target for anything like that. I'm small and scrawny. Fantastic. So you very heroically duck behind your friend. And with that, this guy's going to come forward and he's, uh... So let me see, that's going to be... I just realized. He is going to take a shot. <clears throat> and your AC is going to be 18. So, he like aims this heavy crossbow. <laughs> Looses this big bolt that you just like look like you make eye contact him with him right in that moment, Lolly, and you pick a low head tilt as the bolt just like flies right by your head. And you see after that he kind of like lowers it and he has this sort of stricken gaze upon his face. Like what the hell? No way! It's like somebody doesn't know how to hunt. He says, Screw this! Get them! And these other two are gonna charge forward in that moment. Okay, roll 20. Stop this. Forgot the battle music. That's all good. <coughs> <coughs> so, as they begin charging forward, Gordon... You see an opportunity to strike. What do you do? Um, Cora, you're on deck. All right, I'm gonna move up here. Attack this one here. Excellent. Roll to attack. Oh yeah. <laughs> so you roll to attack, and they just swatted away with their spear. Is that... That's a warning. That's a warning swing there. You might as well turn around and head back now. Because when this kitchen gets hot, it gets hot. And I'll my turn. Alright. Were you dual wielding hand axes? I, um, I can't remember exactly what your fighting oh, style yes, was. was. Yes. <laughs> Alright, please roll for the uh, second attack. Um, so the first one, he swats away. The second one, he does kind of a sidestep as you arc your swing downward. It harmlessly, you know, like you cleaved the shit out of the air. But alas, both of your attacks did not strike true. However, Cora, you see that, um, one of your comrades is engaged with a few enemies ahead. What are you going to do? Um, I'm going to right about here. And then I'm going to poison spray at him. 
at this one here. Excellent. Okay. Uh, please uh, roll to attack. Or is poison spray? That one might be a save, right? Um, yeah, I believe it's a save. Give me just a moment here. Was but if I have to roll, we did roll pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> So that will be Constitution saving throw. Give me just a moment here. Let me find my D12 while you're figuring that out. And that'll be a 15. What is your spell save DC? Uh, it is my it's 10 plus. Um, 8 my, plus proficiency plus your modifier for your uh, casting stat. My modifier is a 4 for charisma. Okay, so 8 plus 4 plus 2, I think, would be a 14. So, unfortunately, they do succeed. Wow, why are these guards, like, fucking Ultra Instinct? <laughs> uh, let, me look, let me see. I think it's half, but I don't remember. Um, let me see what D&D &D Beyond says. And if you click the spell, it should also put the uh, spell into our uh, chat in Rule 20 as well. Yep, con 14. <clears throat> I think it... I think it does negate it because it's only a it's only a cantrip. Well, that's I'll find the D twelve anyway in case it works in the future. All right, cool. <laughs> <clears throat> so, you loose this blast of poisonous liquid that directly impacts them, but they just quickly swat it all off and don't appear affected by the spell. Um, is there any other movement that you'd like to take this turn, or a bonus action spell that you'd like to cast? I am good for right now. Excellent. <clears throat> so with that, um, Ashling, it is your turn. What would you like to do? While the others have been attacking, Ashling has been studying the guards or the soldiers. And as she is able to shapeshift, she slowly morphs into one of them and creeps behind trying to sneak behind the group to see if she can get an advantage. Okay, uh, go ahead, and um, as you move up behind a tree, uh, please roll a stealth check for me. Which dice do I use? Um, that'll be a d20, or you can click on your D&D &D Beyond uh, character sheet, where it says stealth along the left-hand side. If you just um, When you mouse over it, you'll see a little uh, dice with a B up here. Click that B, and it should roll right in this uh, website for you. a two um <coughs> gosh goodness gracious me so um best time right now oh man you guys are performing about as well as my lungs right now um no offense like the, the dice gods are fickle <laughs> they so are fickle. you like begin to morph and one of them's like hey what are you doing you know huh? and you're like half morphed and sort of caught off guard, and they're all like, that one's turning into Jake! <laughs> and all of them are looking at you now. Wonderful. So I morph back into myself, um, and I stand just kind of shocked that they caught me, and not sure what to do at this point. Um, I don't um so let me see um i can't remember you're playing an artificer right yes um what cantrips did you take cantrips. I don't know what that means. um let me uh let me see i'll uh, pull up your character sheet here to help you out um my campaigns okay thank you for your patience as i find your character so let's see, there's Ashling. So, um, there's a little tab on the right where you can see actions. Um, yes. looks like you've got Ray of Sickness. What, what do you have for spells? Okay, it looks like you have Healing Word and Ray of Sickness. Um, Who gets any equipment? Let me see here. Oh. I thought I had a couple of knives. Um, 
So it looks like we didn't get a starting equipment for you. Is there a particular kind of weapon that you would like to use? Um, she's so small and she uses a lot of hand tools, so I figure she would probably have like dual wielding knives. Okay, so we can give you a couple knives then. Um, give me just a moment here and I'm going to get that all set for you, okay? Okay. So we'll go a couple of daggers and you have a light crossbow and some leather armor. Um, I'll give you some alchemy supplies. And I am i know that I'm messing around in your character sheet, so I'm not trying to uh, mess with you or anything like that. I'm just trying to make sure that it's all there for you, okay? Yeah, no worries. If you refresh the page, you should see some differences. There are now daggers that you can use. You can, if you'd like to, move over to one of them and you can attack with a dagger. And there's one other thing that I'd like to do here. Give me just a second here. Okay. Yeah, because she was trying to move around. Because I want to see what kind of spells you have. My toddlers. <laughs> they never do. <laughs> Toddler behave? What? My seven-year-old acts like he's 16. <laughs> yeah, same with mine. He started, he's in the eye-rolling stage now, finally. Yeah, my seven-year-old turns everything I say into an argument. Oh, yeah, hi. Every yeah. word out of my mouth is somehow an argument. Uh, I don't know. Um, I don't know. But, yeah, if yeah. you'd like, maybe you could fire your light crossbow or you can use your daggers. And as you roll that, I'm going to look in more because I feel like you should have more spells than this. Give me just a moment. Okay, I'm going to roll my dagger. That was a five. Oh, goodness. Um, you know what? Reroll that. Okay. Uh, seven. Okay, unfortunately, it does not quite succeed. You go to a slash with it, but they... Um, kind of step back really quickly, seeing um, as they were pretty fixated on you in that moment um, already. So, yeah, it looks like we didn't get spells added for you. Would okay. you be offended if I just choose a few real quick so that you've got a little more options on the fly? Well, go for that, because i got to go chase this one down. Let's Absolutely. Thank you. You know, I was explaining just before we started, like I told my son, I said, grab the cat, go to your room and wait for me. <laughs> he grabs the cat in his room, comes back into my office and talks to me. And I go, just it's a pretty percent. clear instruction, sir. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I had a similar th instance at dinner tonight. I was like, okay, just sit down. Eat your dinner, it's chicken nuggets and fries, and just sit there quietly and eat them real quick. Every five seconds he had to start a conversation. I'm like, no no no. Okay. Not, you're not understanding. That should that should have fixed our character sheet, so that should work better now. So with that we're gonna have this guard also kind of charge upward. No, he he's gonna stay behind actually, as you can kind of hear them whispering something, but you can't quite make out what's being said. But this one's gonna charge forward. And they are going to, uh, they are going to attack at, oh goodness, it looks like that will be, uh, Ashling. Well, she's going to have fun coming back for that, isn't she? And that'll be an 18. Please don't be rude. They get you for five <laughs> piercing damage, but that's, that's not enough to donor, so that should be all right. And as they pierce her and catch her in the arm, you can see blood coming out from, um, from a wound not terribly deep, just kind of more of a grazing uh, sort of scratch. But, um, Bogart, you see that one of your allies has taken a small hit. What are you going to do about it? All right. Bogart is really upset with himself right now because he's got his spectacles. So uh, he's going to move over underneath this tree here. Uh, let me move him. And um, now that he's a little bit closer and the, the, the enemies are a little bit more in focus now, he, he's pretty confident that he can hit one with an Eldritch Blast this time. So we're going to go for it again. going to hit 
this guy here. Um, also, Lolly, it looks like you got a D4, so remember that for next round. Yeah, thank you. Right, Excellent. So yeah, yes, please uh, go ahead and roll to attack. Yeah, nope. That's I'm feeling like I need to rethink this whole fucking thing. Because, like, <laughs> I've got Ultra Instinct Shaggy as the fucking guards here. I've got a plus six and I rolled a four, so six plus four is ten. <laughs> like, roll it again. The rolls can't be much worse than that. Just roll it again. <laughs> this is why I stay away from digital dice. I'm going Samuel Jackson here. I am sick and tired of these motherfucking fours in this motherfucking game. Well, I'm sorry. I try. I tried to help, but the um. That's okay. As you go to conjure your spell, you almost feel a moment of an emotional heightening and then a lowering, as your patron apparently just abandons you to your fate in this moment. Now that's me um, going senile. <laughs> but um, you like launch it, and like it's kind of like that moment when you go to throw a ball, but you let go like way too early. And it like sort of like, and it just shoots up into the air, and you hear, and like this hawk starts to fall down, perfectly crisped. However, I got us lunch for when we're done. We'll keep that in a minute. And uh, I guess with that, that's your turn. Uh, that that's it. That's all I'm doing right now. Lolly, everything okay. sucks. What are you gonna do about it? I feel like this first encounter, the warm-up is like a Benny Hill skit. You're just running... <laughs> so seeing that, uh, Jackson is it Ashley that has the bow? Yeah. Yes, that's a that's Ashling right there, yes. So seeing that uh, Ashling's getting kind of surrounded there, I'm going to uh, shoot crossbow at that one, try and help out without getting too close. Excellent. Uh, please roll to attack. Excellent. Roll for damage. Five. And uh, which one was it again that you were... Uh, could you ping it for me? That Excellent. So, they are bloodied as you pull out your crossbow and sink one right into their arm. And as they're kind of clutching their spear, they... Oh! Oh, damn! And he kind of looks back. Little help over here! And you can see the others kind of starting to pensively move forward to assist their comrade. Is there any bonus action or additional movement that you'd like to take? Uh, yeah, I'm going to move right here. And Lolly, as she moves over, like, Oh, you need help to fight people, eh? We're not so weak and small as a little muppet you're torturing. And you can see over and back, one of them's like, Oh, they got a soft spot for the muppets, huh? And one of them that's crawling away, they take their axe and just bury it in their back. Which one was it? It was right, well, that's this guy. Right now. That guy. That's a bag of dicks. Yep. Ha! Huh. And soon you'll be as dead as these stupid Muppets. <laughs> Alright. And with that... I end my turn. Rhyme Pib. It is once again your turn, as my camera very awkwardly freezes. The best name. Uh, Rhyme's gonna move, wants to move over this way. I uh, try to get a better angle on one of these guys for readying his bow again. And, and uh, excellent, yes! So, uh, you'll also, if you hit, you can apply your snake attack to this. So please roll to attack. I'm for that punk over there. Alright. It's a 21. That uh, succeeds. Please roll for damage. At least the arrows are hitting. Five. Yeah. Arrows are on fire. Okay, so that's five plus three sneak attack damage, so a total of eight. You catch them like right in the side, and they double over, clutching the bleeding wound in their side. They're barely standing up. Through pained gasps, they clutch their weapon, but they're not looking very good. 
<coughs> and I believe that's your turn. Um, you can, if you would like, as a rogue, you can bonus action dash to take more movement to do more space. You can try to get around the tree and bonus action hide if that's something you'd be interested in. Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and do that. Okay. Um, so yeah, go ahead and move behind the tree and then please roll a stealth check for me. Stealth, stealth, stealth. <laughs> do, 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 do. I can't wait for the stealth to appear in the chat. Oh, yeah, um, you feel reasonably confident in your abilities. You kind of crouch, taking some cover in the shadows of the canopy of the tree, kind of like really nestling in under some leafy ferns. So this this guy confidently just strides forward, aiming with his... Uh, Aiming with his crossbow once again. And he takes another shot. Ah, 18 does succeed against your armor class. <clears throat> so he takes another one at Lolly and catches you right in, like, grazing your arm, dealing 8 damage. Yeah. And you can see, like, he's just got this wicked grin as he's just continuing to walk forward, already reloading that crossbow. Okay. This guy is actually going to disengage and get, try to get away. As you see him limping away, he's like, ah, I'm sorry, boss. He's like, ah, don't worry about it. I'm going to take care of these ones myself. And he points right at Lolly. <laughs> nope, because he did disengage. This one is going to take... Uh, They've got you surrounded, so... No. Let me be fair about this. Let me roll this. So, one through three, he's going to go for Ashling again. That's a one, so he's going to attack Ashling. <clears throat> 19, as he does have advantage, does succeed against your armor class, so he's going to catch you for... Another four, just a mere glancing blow against you, but you take another four damage as they stab at you with their spear in a very vicious and violent sort of fashion. In that moment, however, Gordon sees his comrade in trouble. What are you going to do? And that means, Cora, you're on deck. All right, um, let's see. Well, you're, you're, you're after, after Gordon. Okay. All right. I just like to let people know when their turn's next. Attack this guy. Oh, I was gonna say, if you're right here, you could take advantage. <laughs> yeah, let's definitely that still. That was Why cool. am I helping you? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it's getting a little better without too much. <laughs> it's about killing. It's the gill over killing the last one. Man. Um. Technically, you get advantage with both hands. Why? <laughs> Just why? <laughs> I've never seen rolls this bad ever. Um. So, uh, yeah. I mean, unless did you get any any inspo donated? Uh, nothing. I'm donating. Nope, I'm donating. Oh, looks like you're getting a an inspiration die. That's cool. Okay, full point of inspiration. Please go ahead and just entirely re-roll that second attack. Okay. <laughs> come on. Here it comes. Okay, come on. Roll one more. <laughs> Finally! <laughs> roll for damage! Yes. All right. You land a solid hit and they are bloodied. <clears throat> Good. Captain. You sink like the first your first swing, they like do this really cool thing that you almost respect for a second. We're not even looking behind. They just hold their like spear back and catch it. 
but then you kind of have their arm pin for a second. You swing the other one around and just uh, catch him in the side, driving the weapon in. And after that, he goes, Spice is life. <laughs> Who goes dynamite? Hot damn. Okay, and with that, Cora, it is once again your turn. Um, Ashling, you're on deck after Cora. I'm going to take a step right there, and then right here is where I'm choosing to do it. Um, these two are within 10 feet of it. I'm going to use my shatter um, spell. It's uh, got a 60 foot radius, so this is where I'm um, going to pin it. Within 10 feet, it a con save. Could you give it a click for me just so I can see the uh <coughs> cuz if you click it should come over here so that I can see cuz I believe it's a radius thing. Yeah. Okay, click right there. And oh, did I click the right one? This is the one. So shatter is Six, 60 feet range, 10 foot area, and they're each going to do a con saving throw. Excellent. Okay. So it should affect at least these two mofos right here. Um, One got a 13, one got a 16. <clears throat> Alright, well, it affected at least one. Heck yes, you did. Jolly good. Okay, Um. so yes, please, uh, please roll the damage. One will take half, and I believe one will take full. All right. Total damage is four, three, three. So we got 10 total damage. Okay. Tell me what happens to one of them. All right. So um, at this point where I am pinging at, I extend my hand and cast the um, shatter. They hear the loud, sudden ringing noise that just makes them both crouch down like this. And uh, the little one goes, Meh! and <laughs> just cries all over <laughs> That's fantastic. And yeah, so like you see they're like clutching their ears and they just bleed out from their eyes from the sheer extreme um, just volume of that shattering sort of sound that echoes out into the air. Even the trees rustle, leaves cascading down from it. My wife laughs in the distance. <laughs> oh, did someone say something? And, and the big I'm one sure. just kind of like picks his ear a little bit with his pinky. Just... <laughs> You're next. Yeah, with my and he shouts back to the other, Go get help! I will be right back. All right. Oh. So video's going to look a little weird for just a second, um, but I'm not going to bother fixing it because she'll be right back. Um, that's on me. I forgot to mention that. So, uh, Ashling, it is your turn. What are you going to do? If I might make a few recommendations. Um, so, if you move away from these guys, they get a free attack against you. Unless you use your action to do what's called disengage. If you do that, you can move away to safety and they don't get that free attack. You just I've won't be able to do anything else. I've been stabbed, right? Twice. Yeah. You've Twice. taken a total of nine damage so far. Okay. So, I am going to turn to this guy that's next to me. Um, really, this one here. Um, and I'm going to use Acid Splash against him in retaliation for being stabbed. All right. Um, so you're going to Acid Splash on him? Yep. Okay, fantastic. Uh, can you click the spell for me? Uh, dexterity save. All right. So let's see if he makes it. 13. Unfortunately, they do succeed. Man, why are these guards so strong? <laughs> Y'all are killing me right now, you guys. <laughs> mm. <laughs> That's only a 13, really? <coughs> yeah, I guess so. So unfortunately, that doesn't quite work. Um, 
You can move away if you'd like to, but they will get a free attack at you. Or would you like to stay there? I'll stay here. Okay. I don't think I can get another attack under me and survive this. So this guy scampers off, disappearing into the underbrush and uh, further off into the forest. This guy is going to disengage and just try to get away from you because he's starting to hurt pretty bad. And as he begins to retreat, Buggert, you see an opportunity to attack. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, let's see. So one thing too, just before we go any further, um, yeah. if anybody needs to go AFK, like don't turn camera off, just like cover it because otherwise it shifts everything. That's something I forgot to mention that, so that's my bad, a hundred percent. Yeah. No. I will keep that in mind for the future. <laughs> and yeah, actually, and if anybody here ever, ever does like D&D &D streaming, when you set up Discord and you have everybody like on, like in their spaces like we do, if somebody drops and then they come back, it'll automatically put everybody back in the right spot. But that's why you have to have everybody on video first before you set it up. Okay. The things I've learned the hard way. <laughs> um, All right. So I'm going to move another 30 feet just to get a little bit closer to the melee here. All right. I am really rethinking these bosses now because Jesus Christ. Yeah, these rolls are great. Uh, I'm going to move just ahead of Ashling here, and I see the big guy that was speaking from before, and I'm going to focus an Eldritch Blast on him. And actually, no, I'm going to hit this guy because I see that he's, he's hurt pretty bad, and I'm going to get rid of him. So Excellent. Let's see if I can hit him. Let's see if I can hit him. You can do this. I believe in you. Sweet! Roll for damage! Yeah! yeah. Uh, I smashed with my I smashed with my um, oh. light and shatter and everything gonna, is working I'm right now. I'm gonna roll another D eight for that because uh Or is that for attack rolls only? For the inspiration? The um that's for attack D8. rolls only, yeah. Oh, okay. Then it's just gonna be two damage. Tell me what happens. Oh, sweet. Yeah, so he's... I'm not sure if he was limping or if he was, like, crouching. My eyesight's still not that great. But uh, I'm going to hit him with the blast, um, go for a wind-up like a baseball, and just pitch it at him and trying to aim for his head. But whatever I hit kind of just explodes into pieces and kind of shatters shatters him and scatters body parts kind of all over the place. Uh, that's more like it. Definitely need to bring my spectacles next time. All right. And then I'll just end my turn. And that is your turn. With that, um, then Lolly, you have another opportunity to uh, attack. It seems like you guys are really turning the tide in this moment. What do you do? Um, Rhyme Pib, you it's your turn next. I love that name after my hero. <laughs> Rhyme Pib. I know, right? Yep, kiss. Mm -hmm. Alright, so what's it going to be, Lolly? Oh, I'm um, sorry, yeah. Okay. No worries, it's all good. I got distracted by Rhyme Pib. <laughs> <laughs> the original Mr. Pib. So I'm going to move here. And I'm going to aim for the douche who shot me and grazed my arm. And I'm going to shoot him with my crossbow. All right. Before I talk shit, I want to see if I can actually roll good. <laughs> right. Fifteen. Is that your final answer? No. <laughs> no. I'm going to redeem the full inspiration that Katie gave me. Okay. Jolly good. <laughs> Come on, crossbow. Come on. Oh, no. <clears throat> no. <coughs> Ouch. Okay. So, yeah, that's my final answer, but Lolly's gonna <laughs> say your uh, aim is as bad as your hunting skills. He's like, in this moment, loading his crossbow, and you fire, and he's just bringing it up, and you hear, <clears throat> as your bolt hits the crossbow, and he yanks it out and throws it down. 
What's this? Never mind. You're not next. Shouldn't focus on something that's weaker than me, and his gaze turns to Boggart. Shit. And that will be your turn. So, with that, um, Rhyme Pib, it is your turn. What um, are you going to do? I think, real quick, how um, how do you do the distance uh, measure oh, thing? Um, so, on the left-hand side, you'll see a toolbar. Near the middle, there's one that looks like a ruler, and if you click and drag with the left click with the left mouse button, you can have a ruler that'll measure distances. That's great. You can also click and drag, right click, and it'll save that point, and you can have multiple points in case you are trying to measure a radius or something. Fuck <coughs> 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 off, uh, body! I'll start with trying to sneak my way. Uh, let's see. One, two. Um, do know if you are sneaking, you can only move up to half your speed while maintaining that. Because you're like, it's like when you're in Skyrim and you're crouched and being real sneaky. You don't go quite as fast. Uh, I think I'll just slightly move out from behind the tree here. And from uh, here, you've got line of sight if you have a ranged attack. <clears throat> that I do. So I'm going to try and take a sneaky little shot at big jackass here. Um, please take advantage on this attack as he does not notice you right now. This is a surprise attack. Nice. Alright, and you can roll that a second time and take whatever one's higher. I really hope this... You guys! I just... 16... Um. Roll for damage. Yeah, you better erase that. What was it? Go ahead and roll for damage. Six. So that's a total of 14. Hot damn. So you land a very solid attack against him as he's confidently stepping forward you just sink an arrow into his side and he ah! cries out in pain and looks down at it and begins trying to look around he and he his gaze falls right to you is there anything else that you'd like to do Um, how far are you, fucker? Perfect. Oh, he can get you. And I can get him. Um, I have whales from the grave. So right after my sneak attack, I can use a second creature. I'm assuming this guy. And uh, can you go ahead and click that ability so it comes here in chat for me? Nope, not my one. Okay. Okay, let me see. You channel the power to harm someone immediately after you deal sneak attack. You can target a second creature that you can see within 30 feet. Um, it would have to be a second creature. Oh. All right. Um, but within 30 feet, that, uh... Still yeah! The other guy, though. That part, yeah, that works. Okay, um... Tell me what happens to that guy. So first I shoot the big guy with the arrow, and I'm feeling a little bold from my little kobold uh, ass, so I go turn to the other dude, and I'm going to look at him real hard and just with my offset eyes, and this horrible noise emanating from something I'm assuming he can't see just makes his heart pump a little too hard and he just stops. And his eyes roll back as he grasps at his chest but collapses, no longer drawing any breath. 
And in that moment, this guy turns to you. And he's just going to go all in. Dropping his weapon, he draws what appears to be a sword-sized weapon, but it's a chef's knife. Wow, really? Um, so that uh, does not succeed, so he's going to get a second attack. Wow! Okay. Apparently, we're just playing w Dungeons and Whiffing tonight. Um, you very yeah, dexterously yeah, dodge and weave under the attacks, and they're unable to hit you. But in that same moment, Gordon, you see an opening. This fool has turned his back on you. What's on the menu in Hell's Kitchen? Alright, we'll move right there. Right, he's gonna stay. Alright, it was time to deal with the deli cook. Alright, uh, roll to attack. I might use. I think I have a D4. I'm using D4. <laughs> okay. That's, uh, um, you can, but I'm, I'll tell you this much, it won't make a difference. Oh, well, okay, never mind. I'll stay with D4. You know? <laughs> I'm going to try attack again there. Okay. Roll for damage. Sweet. You guys just get into this big, like, Pairing, and then BAM! You catch him across the chest. It's a kind of a moderate wound. Uh, they are looking pretty haggard at this point. Uh, not quite bloodied, but the large guy has taken a pretty considerable amount of damage. And uh, I believe that would be your turn. Which brings us to Korra. Alright, so she's going to stay where she's at. But she's going to throw an Eldritch Blast at the big guy. Yeah. Excellent. Uh, roll to attack, please. It's a three. Can I re-roll that? <laughs> yeah. You guys. 17 plus 6. So roll for that damage. Alright. 1d10. And it is going to be seven, um, seven damage. I got a seven. Excellent. The large guy, after taking the incredible force of your Eldritch Blast that you conjure, you can hear the bone splintering force of the impact. As they're now bloodied, looking like, like they're still holding up, but not by a whole lot. I'm feeling this now. <laughs> that mage right there forget her <laughs> alright and with that that's your turn which brings us next to Ashling. you've taken a few hits but you've got some that you can deal yourself it appears that there's only one enemy left what would you like to do oh you're it looks like you're muted Having trouble hearing you, I'm sorry. It's not a real D&D &D night without technical issues. It's... Hello, hello. I can hear you a little better. Okay, good. Yeah, yeah. I get the wireless one. Um, so Ashley is going to raise her crossbow and shoot at the last enemy. Excellent. Uh, roll to attack. Eight. Hot damn! Roll for damage. Uh. And 
And uh, to roll damage, oh. So it won't be a D20. Um, what you can do is in the in the roll 20 chat here, you can see where it says that 21. There's a highlighted section that says crossbow light. If you left click on that, it'll roll the damage. Okay, three, not bad. You get kind of a glancing blow grazing kind of, sort of across their back shoulder. They let out kind of another low cry of pain and still fighting, but uh, you delivered a significant hit to them. Would you like to remain there, perhaps move to another location, or are you good? Cannot hear you, I'm sorry. Uh, move forward a little bit so I can get a better plant, or a better visual. Okie doke, uh, feel free to move yourself wherever you'd like to go. All right, and with that, Boggart, you can see that the last enemy is not holding up well. Your combined strength is quickly overwhelming them. What are you going to do? All right, let me show you whip a snap is how it's done. He's gonna move forward, yeah, right, right next to the tree here. Kind of line up against it. And he's gonna he's gonna roll one more eldritch blast, but he's gonna he's gonna do the uh, he's gonna wind up his eldritch blast, and then he's gonna do like the granny bowling roll and just like roll it across the ground. Excellent. <clears throat> roll a uh... eldritch blast. Do I hit it? Oh, for good. Okay, I'm gonna add my. Hold on, I need to roll a d8. Uh a D8 could do it, potentially. <laughs> the rolls are so bad tonight. Oh my goodness. I'm really <laughs> rethinking the last boss right now. <laughs> I can't... Oh. Wow. I, ha I really had faith in D&D uh, &D Beyond's digital dice, but <clears throat> they're failing me tonight. I'm really proud of you guys. You're making the best of a bad situation. Uh, so it's like it's like that bowling ball. Where you roll it, and it just kind of it gradually rolls towards the gutter and just uh, disappears into the distance. Just, you like roll it, and it kind of just goes down behind him and like destroys the grass. <laughs> the nice thing is the ground takes plenty of damage from it. Sweet, uh, something did. That's all that. Which brings us to Lolly. Um, you're witnessing something that defies reason. <laughs> Lolly, you really you should really... have brought your spectacles. <laughs> I know, I know. Don't remind me. Okay, so Lolly is gonna um, move right here. I did measure it out. Um, assume that I can just cut across that tree right there, like go under it, then here. That you can, yeah. Okay, and to get flanking, I'm gonna uh, use un unarmed strike, I'm gonna drop the crossbow and use unarmed strike. Okay. I have one question. Do you have proficient, like... So unarmed strike, if you're not a monk, will only do one damage plus your strength mod. Oh really? Mm-hmm. Oh shit. Okay. I believe oh. you do have melee weapons you can use. I think I saw like a flail or something. Yeah, I'm gonna use that instead. Okay. I'll go ahead and roll with that, please. Thank you. And take advantage as you are flanking. Um, so, Molly's arm hurting after getting grazed by that, kind of feeling it, just uh, goes to the <coughs> and just... <laughs> you just give, like, the world's most half-hearted swing. And, like, it just, like, kind of flop, just, like, flops against him, and he, he, like, looks down at it and gives you this really mean glower. It's a love tap. <laughs> It'll 
motherfucker. <laughs> there you go, champ. I knew you were weaker than me. Pathetic. But in that moment, there's another unseen force at work. As Rhyme Pib, it is once again your turn. What would you like to do? Um, seeing it, he's yeah. basically uh, towering over me. I think I'll switch over to my rapier and very disrespectfully, instead of using it properly and going for like a thrusting attack, I'm just going to rear back and like harpoon it at him. <laughs> disrespectfully. Disrespectfully. Perfect. Roll to attack. I don't respect you. <laughs> 19. Yeah, yeah, dude. <laughs> Roll for damage. Oh man, this is hilarious. Eight, Eight. damage with the throne <laughs> rapier. <laughs> this is so great. <laughs> That's the best thing ever. How are you going to do this? Oh my god. I said yeah. I'm just eyes. <laughs> Eyes for the first time since we've started this fight locked on right for his face. Reel back and just it goes nails him right in the eye and just sinks in from there. And as I watch him go down, I just give this shitty dog smile just And in that moment the battle is won. There's a peaceful moment of rest that you have after that. Um, what are you guys going to do? <clears throat> uh, um, can I loot, um, well, look in the bodies and see if there's anything, like, useful? Absolutely. Um, so... <clears throat> there is a, uh... One of them, it looks like they had a really large weapon. It looks like a two-handed butter knife. Okay. If anybody knows the spell Identify, uh, you can cast it to immediately get this, or you can, if you'd prefer, use a Knowledge Arcana check, and that would allow you to discern what it is as well. House Rule of Mine, you don't have to know Identify. I have identify. Fantastic. Um, so you can cast it immediately by using a spell slot, which is kind of like MP in this game, or you can do what's called ritual casting. Where like, imagine you have to draw like a magic circle and stuff. It takes 10 minutes to do it, but you can do it without using a spell slot, which those are like a pretty precious commodity for casters. And since you do have a moment of downtime, I could totally abide by like, yeah, we can just assume that you're ritual casting it. Okay, can I just click the cast button? Yeah. <coughs> As I die. Um, so, you have identified this mysterious weapon. It is uh, a two-handed sword of considerable magical power. It is an ancient artifact known as the Spreader. This two-handed butter knife can spread butter like a champion. It deals 2d6 slashing damage, just like any other two-handed weapon, but it also deals 2d6 butter damage. I'm totally keeping this. <laughs> I picked it up. It's mine. <laughs> Alright. I want to check on the Muppets, see if they're okay. <clears throat> I, I want to see if like, any of them are still alive. So as you look around, um... You can see that uh, there's actually a couple of these old man Muppets that are near each other, kind of like crawling desperately, reaching out as if trying to hold each other's hands as they breathe out these raspy, dying breaths. Can I cast Healing Word 
to see if I can heal them? Absolutely. Um, <coughs> however, when you conjure that magic and you unleash the spell, the magic of your word floating through the air, and you can see the spell land upon them, but it has no effect. And that's a very strange thing to you, is you have the ability to heal magical and non-magical beings with this, but it does not appear to affect these Muppets. I try. Uh, let's see. Is there a knowledge we can roll to see if they're even like, like in maybe knowledge nature or something to know, see if we, if it's even like a natural being, whether it's magical or not? Could you please roll knowledge arcana for me? Arcana? Mm-hmm. I do not have arcana. I only have nature. Oh wait, nope, I do have arcana. There it is. Seventeen plus four. It was written in Legends of Vorfall, an old book that you'd read at one point during your journeys, that the Muppets are actually an ancient being. They're effectively automatons. They're the keepers of the bastion of civilization of Vorfall, the hidden city where all the secrets of flavor are hidden, a place known by legend as Flavortown. Now, going in the right direction. Mm -hmm. you, and w with that knowledge, you're confident that this is the way to Flavor Town. However, these Muppets can clearly be destroyed, but um, <clears throat> there's different working theories about how they work. Some believe that it's like a soul bound to some form of puppet. Others believe that they really are just simply hollow beings. It's rather conflicting reports from several hundred years ago. Ultimately, there's very little to go on, but the fact that healing magic isn't working on them does lend credence to the fact that the soul seems to be a separate entity from that which it is bound to. I've heard the best. What are the rest of you doing in this moment? A ring... Uh, Pib is taking back his rapier and um, just goes and takes a bite out of the dude. Okay. Um. Trying to get a sense of the flavor. <laughs> I wish to know what you taste like. <laughs> so, you take a bite of the corpse, and, um, tell you what, tell, tell me, um, Rhyme Pib, have you had human before? <clears throat> See, you're asking too many questions. I simply <laughs> I need a basis you. of comparison. Uh, yes. Um, this one seems to be especially muscly and tough. Um, the flavor's not good. Mouthfeel, it's not, not enjoyable. Gonna spit out the bite and turn to everyone else. Eyes bugging out different directions once again. One eye blinks, then the other eye blinks. He goes, oh. hard, hairy, <laughs> Title. salty. Title. No good. <laughs> And then he's going to go scrounging through pockets. As you're scrounging about, you notice the two puppets that were, like, kind of dying near one, near one another. And they look up and... <coughs> hey! Who are, who are you? One of the old ones kind of, like, squints a bit with those, like, big round eyes. And, like, the eyelids just kind of squint over it. I'm going to, uh, I think I'll crouch down to him, get 
too close into his face and he's like, Rhyme Pib. <laughs> Rhyme Pib! One of them looks over to the other who, coughing and weak, <coughs> looks up and they exchange a glance and they just both start laughing at you. What kind of a name is that? <laughs> that was only like half genuine coughing. Um, Ryan Pibb's brain is too smooth to comprehend their insult. Simply slides over it, and he's going to, um, he's going to let everyone else know that it's like, these ones are still alive. What are the rest of you going to do? Lolly uh, was going back to grab her, grab their crossbow, and pauses as watching Ryan Pib take a bite out of one, just staring, and then grabs the crossbow, <laughs> and uh, I lost my train of thought. I'm sorry. No problem. I got it's fine. Distracted by a baby, <laughs> and. Uh, picking up the crossbow <laughs> and looks at the two Muppets like laughing at <laughs> I keep trying to say prime rib <laughs> prime rib yep <laughs> prime rib prime rib <laughs> and, and looking at those two and it's like is, I'm beginning to think these might be locals and not ingredients <laughs> <laughs> Maybe someone should have casted the mending spell on them instead of the healing spell. Do any of you know the mending spell? Not me. Nobody takes the mending spell? I think everybody's got a baby right now. <laughs> Yours is much more awake than mine. Yeah, she wakes up quick when food's involved. She's like, heck yeah, and mine falls asleep. So they kind of like guffaw a bit as you bring them up and they're like, oh, of course we're all locals. Mm, yeah, we've been living around these parts for 700 years. Oh, well, probably not living for too much longer, right? <laughs> well, at least they're taking their death in stride. One of them looks up. Uh. Well, that's all we can do. After all, these forces that broke into Flavortown, we couldn't defend the others. Ah, to think we were supposed to be the guardians of this place and we were so easily overwhelmed. Ah, uh, but hey, once we're dead, we don't have to worry about any of this bullshit. Ha 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 Oh. <laughs> Why should we tell you? You could be like the others. I mean, we have attempted to kill you, and we just defended you against those psychopaths. She's right, you idiot! But you're the one that said that! You dumbass! <laughs> if you uh, <laughs> follow the path over there, and he extends this small little like furry like sort of fuzzy hand that points to the path continuing through the forest <coughs> oh god ay 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 are you okay you need to come here now we've all got babies um <coughs> but he extends a small hand that points at the path that's continues to cut through the copse of trees and out into the fields once more. They say, If you go that way, you'll find it, but I don't know how much is left. The people that broke through us, they've been ransacking the town. Ah, oh, yeah, couple of a bunch of assholes they are. Takes one to know one. Ah, ha, 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 ha. Well, looks like we're going to have to go take care of a couple of assholes. Hey, 
I remember there was a there was a sex tape about that. Did, didn't it? Didn't that star you? Shut up! It starred Schmidt. That is you, isn't it? I don't know. I'm really old, and I'm a muppet. They continue bickering amongst themselves for a few moments. Right. So before you pass away, where's this tape at? <laughs> what? What do you care? You don't have your spectacles. I can always take it back home. I guess you have your imagination too. <laughs> I don't have that anymore. He beckons you down. There's a a young man there. Name is Jung. Ask him about the tape. You'll know everything that you need to know. Oh, uh -huh, uh -huh. Enjoy and finally one of them seizes up. And their hand drops. That was eventful. Interesting creatures. The other one looks up. Did. Hey, you fuckers! I'm not dead! Just him! <laughs> Just hurry up and die already. I'll be happier that way. Well, fuck you too! Did you want us to carry you home before you die? Or just leave you here? It doesn't matter. Once I'm dead, my soul will... Go back to the crucible and it'll be placed in another automaton. Unless they've destroyed the crucible. Then things would be really fucked. Ha <laughs> ha! Oh. Do have soul. I will note that for future references. Pib stands up and looks at the group and just, I did not bring any toilet paper. You know those leaves for that, right? <laughs> <coughs> I almost thought you were going to say there's Muppets for that. I'm like, what the fuck, man? Oh, I mean, uh, you could. There's Muppets for that. We're going to say that in front of a dying Muppet. Hey, there's Muppets for that. <laughs> what the hell? Very small. I cannot carry the Muppets to, to deal with the assholes. Oh. Uh. Well, I think we should move. Get a move on it. I guess so. So special. Just Everybody leaving this guy here? Bloody <laughs> hell. I'll pick him up. We'll bring him. But once he's once he's dead, I'm dropping him. He's, he looks up. Oh. oh, you're going to carry me, huh? Can I ask a favor then? Sure. Could you bring my old friend Lawford there? And he looks to the other dead Muppet. Ah, oh, sure, fine. And as you kind of pick them both up, you see that he places this affectionate hand on the shoulder of his fallen friend. And this like small smile appears across their face for just a moment as they close their eyes and then they too become limp in your grasp. I don't... <laughs> 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 I I dropped them, but you know what? I'll do the honorable thing and bring them back to where they were from and kind of leave them there. I'll just send them a pro right proper burial. Right? No, I was going to drop them there. <laughs> mm. Right proper dropping them there. <laughs> well, we can take care of that when we get to Flavor Town. All right. So, <coughs> as the DM dies, yeah, yeah. Oh, so, with the a couple of the Muppets in tow, you make your way out of the small forest once more into the rolling fields of Vorfall. And then you see it, once so far in the distance, but now drawing closer and closer. It's both everything you ever imagined it would be, and yet in that moment, so wrong. 
the bright, colorful stonework. The eccentric, leaning, exaggerated architecture. All the pictures that you'd ever seen didn't do it justice. Flavortown is like a grand spectacle. Magic and whimsy abound. But throughout most of it are large columns of smoke rising. Those bright, colorful stones, now chipped, cracked, and broken. Buildings lying in ruin. And the closer you draw to Flavortown, the worse the desolation appears. Ere long, you pass through the front gates, now abandoned, corpses of Muppets scattered abound. It seems as though there's a main street leading up to a hill where there's a rather large house built, but there are a couple of streets kind of circling and cutting between some of the buildings and winding alleyways and paths that you can take. How, how would you like to proceed into the city? What are you going to do? There's definitely aren't cooking fires. That's for sure. As he kind of steps through the gate and kind of goes ahead of everybody to get a better look at the entire city before him. They might need our help after all. Yeah, and Gordon will put the Muppets in one arm and have like an axe out just in case of a surprise. Um, how many how many Muppets are laying around us currently? Are there a lot or a little? There's a pretty good amount. Um, stacks kind of thing. A quick glance around. Um, not stacks. You, there's probably twenty or so of them around, just sort of littered at the ground. It's pretty clear that they were struck down and simply left there. Fresh. Roll survival. Okay. That's fresh cotton coming out the backs right there. <laughs> Judging by the air exposure to the cotton and how it hasn't grown too damp from the moisture in the air, you reasonably think that these are pretty fresh kills. Uh, I think the these jackasses are still nearby. Good, that'll make finding them easier then. Uh, is there like a, any path that the bodies are taking, like one way or the other? You said it was a, there was a lot of winding path. Tell you what, um... <clears throat> Ooh, that dislodged something. Um, so, I, would you guys please for me um roll a group perception and investigation check everybody please roll both of those the first natural 20 of the night seven for perception and seven for investigation i, I do not care that much <laughs> oh i'll take those rolls i'm good with those Okay, and Rhyme Pib, did you get those rolls too? <laughs> you guys? Man. I'm the one who asked which way we were going, and I don't care enough to know where we're going. <laughs> I know people like that. <laughs> True influencer over here. <laughs> So it's mostly thanks to a couple of you. But you're able to see that there's a good amount of, like, the, the path actually clears. Um, there's a small hill overlooking uh, a house. And it looks like there's less of them over there. It looks like a lot of the slaughter kind of went to the east. And as you're uh, looking around... And trying to really get your bearings for the city as well as... Oh, one second. Ban. As you're trying to get your bearings and to figure out which way the attack went, you see that small um, building sort of cut off from the rest of it. And 
as you're just sort of taking in the area, you notice a little bit of movement within that solitary house. Oh, I think we got movement in that house over there. Which house? That one. I wasn't paying what? attention, I'm sorry. Clearly, but that's why I'm pointing it out to you. Lolly readies their flail. We should at least go see who it is. If it's nobody, we can move on and follow this path to slaughter. Otherwise, if there's someone alive over there, they might have something useful for us. Or, we can just beat them up. Depending on whether they want to beat us up. It's true. Very true. We'll have the element of surprise also, I think. True. Let's go see who's moving. I'm surprised by it. All right. So, um, how do you wish to approach this house? I don't know. Is there a way towards the house that we can move, uh, sort of unseen, like a back alley that heads that way, or do we just, is it just straight down a main, main street? Like, what's the best way to get there? It's... Um, you do have to duck into some alleyways, and in fact, as you're approaching it, it kind of starts to stand to reason to you that this house wasn't particularly noticed because you really had to make an effort to get through the alleyways to reach it. There's probably a living muppet in there or something. Yeah. All right, let's quiet down, try to be sneaky here. If they're, if they're up to no good. So are, are, we trying to sneak, are we trying to sneak to the house then? Because I'm, I'm not going to be good at that. I'm just warning you ahead of time. We'll just do what you can. We'll cover you. Uh, Pib would like to go ahead a uh, little ways as a scout. Uh, try to sneak up and, uh, as close as he can to the house. Okay, so you're kind of tiptoeing up, carefully approaching, trying to watch for any sort of movement. Uh, and when you start getting up, just close enough to the window, ducking under. You peek up to see what you can see. At that moment, I need you to roll a stealth check for me, please. And I'm going to roll a secret roll to counter that. Dale. Oh, man. Oh. Nice. Do you want? You look in, and there's some curtains drawn, but you can see shapes moving behind it. They don't appear very big. But that's about all that you can make out from your current vantage point. Would you like to try to investigate further, or go back and report what you found so far? <coughs> Pib will look for another spot. Try and get a better glimpse in there, or right. hear anything. So you kind of circle around to the other side of it, and there's a small stack of crates that you can see that you can climb up to, and you can see through another smaller high window. <clears throat> you climb up the crates very slowly, gingerly creeping upward, trying not to make a sound. But you start to notice as you start just slowly bearing your weight down, a very quiet creak begins. I'd like you to please roll stealth, and let's say acrobatics. And acrobatics. As soon as you begin to step down and you hear the creak, it's almost as though your body responds before you think about it and you just redistribute your weight. And you're able to silently creep up and peeking into the other smaller window, kind of grabbing with your clawed hands and pulling yourselves up pulling yourself up <coughs> god damn um you look inside and you can see a small collection of muppets in there um most of them huddled up looking very sort of concerned and frightened or at least as much as an expressive puppet can look 
It's more from their mannerisms and just kind of general body language and demeanor that you're able to get more of a feel of what the vibe is in the room. One of them is like, seems to be speaking to some others. It's a thick pane window, so you can't really make out what's being said. But um, <clears throat> there's kind of like an awkward looking green frog thing. A strange looking blue one with matted fur. Um, another one kind of has a strange shaped head with tufts of uh, hair upon it. And they're kind of over near this cauldron. And there's another one. It looks like sort of a pig. But they're donned in like martial arts robes. Alright, hey, uh, seeing that there's no uh, obvious enemies, Pib, he's just going to let go of the window, let himself uh, cascade down probably through the crates before scampering back to the group and being like, there's Muppets. <clears throat> Alright, <clears throat> so you let go and you just completely fall through the crates. Um, you take... Eight points of force damage as you just kind of let go and just like tumble through the crates, large chunks of wood smacking you in the face, like having to pull bits of wood like out of your arms a bit as you get down. But you dust yourself off, and uh, as you begin circling around to the front of the house to go back up, what's your EC? Yep, that succeeds. You suddenly hear this sort of creak of a door, and then you hear, Hi-ya! as you just take like a knife hand strike right to the gourd, as you take um, eight points of bludgeoning damage. Yay. Are you still up? Are you still conscious at this point? I guess that's uh, only 16 points of damage. You're not that bad. Ouch. Yeah, I'm fine. Okay. And you look up. <clears throat> and there the, the like pig one standing there like in a fighting stance like very carefully watching you, or at least as carefully watching as you can discern from again a fucking muppet. The rest of you see that your comrade appears to have been attacked by a muppet. And there's sort of a moment of awkward confusion. What are you guys going to do? Are all of us here now? Did Pib come and grab us or is it just Pib? Um, he's the only one there, but you guys are easily like within eye shot and ear shot of it. You're like maybe 20, 30 feet away. If I see him like basically collapsing himself because he decided to let go, I'm going to come running up. Wait, wait, we're not here to harm you. Come, please. Do I need to roll, like, a persuasion or something? Roll persuasion, take advantage. You need to buy that Muppet dinner first. 20. <clears throat> Her guard lowers a bit, and she says, Oh, no! I must have thought that he was one of those nasty raiders! He does look a little gross, though, right? I completely agree with you, madam. <clears throat> And oh no problem. The frog emerges in the door as well and looks over and says, "Oh well, it, it seems that you guys aren't with those raiders. Would you like to come inside? Oh, it looks well, like a couple of you were hurt too." Yeah, well, certainly we could use some um, aid, mending, and maybe some food and rest. We are here to to help, though. We ran into some of your companions being fought by ghoulish creatures. And we decimated the ghoulish creatures attacking them, but we weren't able to save your comrades, unfortunately. And I do have the comrades right here. Oh, no. And he looks over and he says, Oh, no. Telstar and Lawford. Oh, I can't believe they're gone. I certainly hope that if they're reborn, that they have a 
better life than what this one gave us. Please, come inside. He, like, gestures with the awkward Muppet motions. And, like, walks. <coughs> I give a courteous bow, and then I gesture for the rest of the party to get over here. Right, right, I'm coming, I'm coming, hold on. She reaches on. And, uh... <coughs> As you all draw in, it's a pretty it's pretty cramped quarters. The house clearly is made for um, the Muppets, creatures of smaller stature than you guys. You all sort of feel like Gandalf when you go into like Bilbo's house, like having to tuck your heads down. But um, the frog uh, just kind of gestures to the rather plain and humble furnishings available. Please sit down and help yourselves. Uh. I could have a uh, Rakib cook some food for you if you're hungry. That would be very pleasant. We uh we kindly accept your offer. Yeah, hope you would be nice. Part of the reason we came to Flavor Town to begin with. We all do appreciate a good meal. The blue one looks up. Oh no! I could try to make some food. The frog hesitantly looks at them and says, Well, you know, Zoom isn't a very bad cook either. I'm sure he could probably whip up something pretty good. And he's like, Oh, yeah, yeah, just wait right there. I'll make something very, very good. And he, like, scampers off with those, like, wild, like, arms flailing all over the place. And you just see pots and pans oh. flying out. And he comes out with smoothies. Wait, did you say Zhun? Oh, oh yeah, that's me! Zhun! Zhun? One of the, your friends here had mentioned Zhun and a tape. Oh! Oh, okay! I see! And at, you see every other Muppet just give a dejected sigh. You guys are hearing about my mixtape, huh? Check this out! And he puts in a mixtape of the most embarrassing, like, white boy rap you've ever heard. Right. Just like, no. my name is Zoom and I like food! I don't know what fucking rhymes with food! Like, it's, it's no, it's not good. Like, I need everybody to roll a constitution saving throw. I knew I should have trusted I might these dying Muppets. I got a four. <laughs> Five. Five. So, um, Bogart and Cora, you both take one point of psychic damage. Yeah, I do. Absolutely. And Ashen, can I get that constitution saving throw for you? And how you'll do it is where your stats are, you just click, uh, oh, damn. You also take one point of psychic damage. Uh,. As you just like, it's like so bad that you want to throw up a little bit. I think I do a little bit. And he says, "Oh, don't worry. I'm much better at uh, I'm much better at cooking than I'm at rapping. But I I think my mixtape is going to go somewhere someday." And he hands each of you guys a smoothie that looks dubious. Nothing ventured, nothing gained, I suppose. Now, uh, just go right for it. Oh, yeah! Oh, yeah! It's really it's good! Than your mix tape, that's for sure. Oh, it's much better! I've been rated five stars on mouthfeel! I don't... I'm gonna, I'm gonna watch and see how he handles this, uh, before I decide to brave it myself. Bogart, what you experience is something beyond comprehension. Um, you get every flavor profile coming at you, and not in a subtle way. It is savory. It is sweet. It is spicy. There is umami. There is saltiness. There is everything all at once. And by the time you finish a full drink, you feel as though you've eaten a three-course meal. By the gods. It's a liquid three-course meal. Title! Anything like it. I'm gonna take a hesitant sip. <coughs> Lolly just starts downing it. Oh, yeah. 
So, uh, taking a hesitant yeah. sip, you kind of get that sensation of all these flavors hitting you in a very just robust in your face sort of way. But it's not until <clears throat> you fully like swallow the sip that you get that feeling of, oh, I've just eaten a whole bunch of different kinds of food. I'm going to finish my drink then. All right. I gingerly sip on it a little bit at a time. That's overwhelming. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. That's my that's my best meal right there. Everybody that yep. does drink this, you restore 10 hit points. Sweet. Oh, this is enough to put hair on your chest. I've got hair everywhere. Or chest on your chest, if that's what you're into. I don't think I need any more chest, but thank you. You can see the pig one kind of like looks down for a second and takes one and just chugs it. <laughs> <laughs> the frog looks over at her like, Well, I mean, I think you're fine just the way, you know, like you don't really need any more. Hmm. Kind of like sniffs indignantly and goes away. <laughs> Anyway, uh, I wanted to thank all of you for bringing back Telstar and Lawford. Well, I'll make sure that they get a proper burial. It really means a lot. Yeah, right, right. Uh, where'd these, uh, baddies go? These jerks that, uh, ransacked your village here. Flavortown. One of the other ones, the one with the kind of tufts of hair, just goes... <laughs> I hope that came through. Nope. No. Yeah, it probably came through on the stream, but again, Discord is ass, so, um. But they're just doing high-pitched meat, 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 And the frog goes, oh, I agree, Rakeem. Boy, that's, uh, it really is just a shame. You see, these forces that came to Flavortown, they came here to wipe us all out and so that they could claim the ultimate flavor for themselves. You, we've been tasked with guarding it for over 700 years and nobody's ever managed to find Flavortown, let alone raise half of it. Oh, such sad times we live in. Well, we're here to help get rid of them. So, that's what we're going to do. We're definitely going to help get rid of them. Do you know anything about these jerks? Well, the one who's leading them, and he gives a bit of a shudder. His name is Gaius Fear. He's a warlord from another land, at least that's what I heard some of the other people referring to him as. And he thinks that he can claim the power of flavor for his own. Don't we have anything to do about it? Oh no, it's much worse than you think. You see, flavor represents more than just how things taste. If you claim the essence of flavor for yourself, well, you would have the power to change what flavor is. And flavor is one of the five senses by which people experience reality. If you can change flavor, you can change somebody's cognition of reality. Yeah, well, I like flavors just the way they are, so let's go fix that, right? Yeah, that sounds terribly dangerous. We probably shouldn't let random people that like to raise villages just have that. I didn't spend 60 years in a kitchen just to have people go changing what things taste like. I'm not, yeah. I'm too old to learn all over again. Yeah, I just perfected my recent recipe. If I, if all the flavors change, my show is just, I gotta restart. Well, it's not going to be easy to just take them out like that. He brought a huge force and I couldn't even beat all of them. And the frog nods. It's true, she's one of our strongest warriors and she, I was barely able to get her out of there. If you guys were to go down, it'd be suicide. And then again, the one with the tuft of hair goes, me, 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 me. Oh, that's a good idea. You see, 
To claim the secrets of flavor, Gaius went down to the Ziggurat. It's a secret place located underneath the town of Flavortown. However, there's another entrance you guys could use. It's been sealed since before we were put here, and I don't know, there could be dangerous traps, but it might get you there before Gaius arrives. Seems like a shot. Well, if, if, if worst comes to worst, I have zip zap powers, so I'll just electrocute them. <laughs> we go. We beat Gaius. We eat Gaius. You just want to eat everything, don't you? No, Hang on, rocks please, are actually please. very uh, unflavorful. Well, if you're going to go, then we'll at least do what we can to help you. And he goes over and says, Hey, Jun, can they have some of the stuff that you've been holding on to? Oh, yeah, yeah, I don't mind giving them some of that. And he starts going through this big pile of just stuff. Odds and ends and sundries. and Most of it looks like useless junk, but he hands some of you guys... Like, there's like a really nice chef hat that he hands one of you. And like a chef coat as well. And he hands you a little wooden wand that it looks like the very end there's like three holes etched into it. So what do these do? Well, okay. So this chef's hat is makes you like really, really smart and good at cooking. Which is really important in Flavor Town. And this coat, he holds it up proudly, it can resist even really hot grease. And this is my favorite seasoning wand. So, mechanically, um, the chef's hat, if you equip it and attune to it, you will have um, resistance to psychic damage. The chef's coat, um, functionally, is just leather armor, but you also get resistance to fire damage. The Wand of Seasoning gives you plus one to your spell attack rolls, and you learn, as long as you have it and you're attuned to it, you can cast Prestidigitation. And I believe um, it was Cora that ended up with the spreader, right? Yeah, I have the spreader. <laughs> She's got the spreader. Oh, yeah. I'm so pleased with myself right now. Um, you know, they never let me wear a chef's hat in a cloister. I wouldn't mind trying it on. No one else cares. That's fine. Go ahead. Maybe you'll make up for your lack of spectacles. Pib would raise his hand like, I wish to try that. Well, mm. I can't do anything with a wand, and I have armor on, so... Alright then. Hands the coat, or the hat over to, uh, Rhyme Pib and, uh, takes the coat for himself. So Pib's gonna just put on for a second. His eyes are going to level out once again, and they're going to shrink with, like, horror before he takes it off and hands it back. <laughs> Brain. <laughs> so big. It hurt. Was that too much at once, kid? He just kind of squeals in agony. I'll take that as a yes. Oh, man. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. To me, like, I was in opposite direction. <laughs> so, um, real quick, I want to check in. Um, We're a couple hours in. I know that we have to start pretty late. How is everybody doing right now? Good. I'm okay. Fading. Okay. I'm anticipating, just kind of based upon the current rate, we're probably like 
an hour and a half to two hours from the end, give or take. Um, if people, if people are starting to feel like, Hey, I'm losing momentum. Like I can cut some stuff out and draw it to an end faster. Is everybody feeling a, <laughs> if that matters to anybody, I can always just drop out and let the rest of you guys play. It's not that big of a deal. Would we prefer to try to wrap it up in an hour? An hour sounds good. Cause I, I think I can do it. We're, we're gonna, the the pace is gonna pick up, but yeah, no, no. we're just here to play. Excellent. Um, yeah. all right. So then, um, as you get a chance to gather your items, we can assume that you also do a short rest there. That will give you time to attune to an item if you have one, and you can spend some hit die if you would like to to recover any additional HP that you may need. Also. Since you all have the chef feet, you can prepare food that can restore HP. So I'll give you guys a second if you'd like to roll any hit die to restore HP or anything like that. So the drink we had, was that 10 HP? It was 10 HP, yes. Yeah. So if that topped you off, you're good to go. <coughs> yeah, it only lost the one hit point when I got um, Screechy Terrible Rap Boy song going on there. So right. when I drank the drink, it helped me back out. Excellent. All right. But the rest did bring back up my spell and stuff. So. Oh yeah, because you're you're a warlock. I was like bullshit. Oh yeah, it does. Okay then. Being a warlock, what I've I sell my soul for my ten D um my one D ten can trap. I'll sell. I'll sell my soul for the, for fifty views. <laughs> yeah, but I sell my soul for fifty views. Subscribe to my patrons Patreon. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So after you get a chance to rest, the frog guides you outside, and there's a rather large stone, and he takes you to a grassy knoll just beside it. And you can see there's different spots that he starts touching. And you hear this click. And part of the stone, you can start to see an outline form. As with a low grind, it lowers down. Revealing a dark, dank passage descending underground. That's an empty trick. This is the secret entrance down to the ziggurat. And remember, that's where the secret, the source of all flavor is. I really do hope that you can beat Gaius there, because if he claims the power of flavor for himself, reality itself may change. I hold my hand out for a handshake. Tell him. He, hey, like, you. puts, like, the limp, like, Muppet hand and shakes your hand a little bit. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for your assistance and everything that you've done for us. We'll do our best to make sure that your, what remains of Flavor Town does not get decimated any further. Well, that means a whole lot to hear that. Thank you guys very much for all the help. No, thank you for your help. I think I'll be back for that recipe later, when we're all done here. You just see the blue one like, Oh, oh man, I'm going to, I, I will make a hundred of those if you can save flavor. That's the plan. Not going to waste my life's work on that. Let's go save some flavor. Go save some flavor. Save the flavor. the flavor. The flavor saver. The flavor savior? Flavor saviors. Flavor saviors. Excellent. So. Let's just go to like a general map so you're not looking at that the whole time. <laughs> over here like hmm we're still in the forest you take one last look at everything the desolation of the town the muppets with their hopeful gazes upon you knowing that you're descending into the struggle to save flavor itself and there's something odd for a moment the blue sky 
isn't blue. A strange, otherworldly light, pulsing colors, almost seem to appear. And like... Like a whisper in a dream, it's gone. A strange sort of thing. But you collect yourselves and descend into the tunnels. Now this is where I know those of you who have it are going to tell me that you have dark vision. I have devil sight. All right. Jeez. So, <clears throat> the path leads down some old stone steps worn from countless years. Um, I assume, does, are you guys going to cast any or use any kind of torch to light for the non-dark seers? Uh, I have light, so I can cast light as a spell yeah. for anybody who doesn't have. Yeah. Excellent, I perfect. Are you, all, I don't. are you also a warlock? We have two warlocks in the party. Two warlocks, yep. Leave it to you guys then. That's right. Alright, we got double light. We'll do, one will stand closer to the front, one will stand closer to the back, so that way we're fully surrounded by light. I'll take the lead this time. I, despite okay. my poor vision on the surface, I do better in the dark anyways. I mean, same. Hmm. Okay. Let an old man take charge for once. So, the tunnels descend down for some time until you eventually come out into a large open chamber where as you look around it's almost like there are so many winding tunnels coming in and out and ancient scaffolding going down that it's almost like ant tunnels and there at the bottom is a large stone ziggurat with a strange red glow it's so far under the surface of the earth that you can actually feel the heat of the earth beginning to rise. That orange glow illuminating the time-worn stone of the ziggurat. A path leading up to it. And before the ziggurat, there's like a little island. Let me just kind of pull this up for myself real quick here. And that island has a small altar atop it, the ziggurat residing in a sort of like lake of magma. And you discern that there's something on that little island that you can take a path down to that will get you where you need to go. And so you begin your descent. It's treacherous. But... After what feels like several hours of travel, you come out in an open, rocky area. You begin to approach, seeing... Let me just grab you guys real quick here. Again, my apologies. Normally, I like to start a little earlier, so I've got more time, but I'm going to just kind of cut to the chase for you guys here. No problem. Yeah, all good. Okay. Them that we're like way over there. But you finally make your descent. The heat of the lava is sweltering, caked in sweat and dirt from the long, hard journey through the tunnels. You feel exhaustion begin beginning to gnaw at you. I need everybody to roll a constitution saving throw for me. Nice, much better. Man's not having it. Oh, I wait, got. I have an inspiration. Old man is like, I'm gonna die of heat exhaustion. Guess I'll die then. Duh. <laughs> yeah. I'm just gonna die. I got twelve altogether. Anybody that has rolled below a fifteen, um, does incur one level of exhaustion. 
glad I rolled a 20. You draw closer and you feel something. An overwhelming magical aura. Even those who are not so inclined to the arcane arts can feel magic a buzz in the air. But that's when you hear it. Stepping forward on the other side. A terrifying image. Several... Guards, armed with bows, Damn. precede him. <laughs> As he steps forward, that must be glorious. large and terrifying, his armor painted with decals to look like rising flames creeping up. Dark sunglasses obscuring his eyes. But most terrifying of all, his frosted tips. He steps forward. You didn't think that I'd let you have the secrets of flavor so easily, did you? You didn't think that we'd let you have the secrets of flavor so easily. Did you? Yeah, what she said. <laughs> and just then sorry one second I gotta just pull up this little stat block here he pulls out this giant two handed chef knife and he levels a gaze from behind those Behind those sweet, sweet shades. And he says, Then let's see who's gonna make it to who's gonna make it back to Flavor Town. May the tastiest chef win. I'd say he's like ready my hands. His hands clutch tighter on the weapon. He says, we're taking you on a road rock and trip down to Flavortown, where the gravitational force of bacon warps the laws of space and time. Roll for initiative. Actually, I'd like some of that bacon, if you don't mind. I am not as upset about uh, fighting this time. I got an 11. Ooh. Okay, so you got an My 11? only good roll tonight. Well, second good roll. 18. No. no. Better than a seven. It's true. Oh. Why? I was not interested in fighting last Hello. time. This time I'm like, I had some woody banter. I'm down for fighting. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I'll take okay, it. So Let's fight a little there. bit. Stokes there. I wanted right. to zap somebody. When power? did this turn into an X-rated stream? Always. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Okay, so you got a 17. And Cora, what did you get? Eleven. Eleven. Much better than a seven. And um, Schmidt, what did you get? Eighteen. Gordon, what are you doing, man? You got a five. <laughs> oh fuck yeah! Fuck He's yeah! Go first on the second turn. Oh, yeah! Oh, yeah. Oh, boy, that's yeah. not great. Dang, he like, super wants to fight. Look at that 23. Like, I'm all about it. <clears throat> Alright, right. let me just grab one more stat block here and let us begin the fight for Flavortown. Okay. So this one is, let me see here. This guy's going to move up. Two, three, four, five. And he is going to take a shot at you. Maybe. Oh, fucking critties. Holy shit. 
So it's still just like, like it's one of those things that it would have caught you right in the heart, but you turn just in time and it's a glancing blow as you take four damage. Then he takes another shot at you. 16 succeeds. Tags you for another three. So then it grazes your side. As you can see from kind of behind this cowl, this wicked grin as they reach back ready to knock another arrow. That's not what I named you. One second. That's not what I named you. What's wrong with you? Bastard. <laughs> Whatever, that's fine. It's just gonna happen. Title. So he is going to run And we're going to roll athletics. Fuck yeah, he just leaps across it. Of course he does. Because why wouldn't he? Damn. And boom, as he like lands in a superhero pose, he gets up. Peace, love, and talk, Hokerese. And as he lands, Lolly, you see an opening to attack. It's your turn. Um, Bogart, you're on deck next. <coughs> oh boy. So, uh, this part right here, is that a wall? Like, or can I see over it? Um, it's like a handrail going up this, uh, really worn old, uh, stone bridge. So okay. you can see over it. going to shoot at Gary? Yeah. Yeah. Crossbow. 22. That, that succeeds. Roll for damage. <coughs> Seven. All right. So you shoot and it just barely grazes his arm. <clears throat> is there any other action you'd like to take? No. Or bonus no. action, rather. Uh, no, I, I'm good. I'm going to end my turn. I'm going to stay where I'm at, too. Excellent. Bogar, you too see an opening in his defenses and an opportunity to act. It is your turn. Um, Rhyme Pib, you are up next. So, knowing that they're now at the precipice of... It, what is possibly could be the end of flavor Bogart knows uh, it's about time this wasn't even my final form and I'm going to first cast <coughs> my action Radiant Soul to initially transform uh, gaining glimmering eyes and grow to, uh, wings and then as a bonus action, I'm going to use Form of Dread. And as my patron shifts me into something far more dreadful and hideous. Does the DM want to give me a form? <laughs> yes, I do. Let's see here. You transform into this how oh, beautiful yes. I love it <laughs> absolutely amazing uh, let me see something I think I actually have Error death. I think I uploaded and as um, part of my action for Radiant Soul, it lets me take an attack for free as part of that turn. So I'm going to then uh, cast Eldritch Blast from thy stomach mouth. Yeah! Sphere. <laughs> Roll to attack. Vomit out this blast of energy 
right at him. Fantastic. 10 out of 10. Oh, God, the rolls well, are so bad. <clears throat> you should have just brought your own dice, man. I normally roll my own dice, but I just wanted to play with roll 20 tonight. So. Is that your final answer? Uh, I don't think I had any more inspiration, did I? I used my D10 from earlier. Yeah, yeah, that, that that's just how it's going to be. He, he reaches up and grabs your Eldritch Blast and just poof, dissipates it in his hand. He says, I'm the ambassador to Flavortown. And that's uh, that's your turn then. Rhyme, Rhyme Pib. Um, you have just seen that Bogart became a whole lot of what the fuck. <laughs> <clears throat> and Guy Fieri is running at you and that's a whole lot of what the fuck. And really... This whole day has been a whole lot of what the fuck for you. It's true. Your eyes are just going everywhere right now. <laughs> they, they look like they're having like their own like rave party. They're practically spinning in their sockets. <laughs> um. Uh oh. We're here. And as I pass by everyone, I just kind of mutter my, to myself, I wish I'd never got picked out of that fire. What? And, uh, That's probably I'm what doing, happened. That's a special... Uh, That's a whole different story for another time. Oh, I just got a point of inspiration. Fuck yeah. <laughs> and I'm going to ready my bow and... Oh, Try to you. shoot this big frosted tip fuck from over behind this little rail. Oh, <laughs> Excellent. Is that your final answer? <clears throat> oh, did I hit him or did I like bounce away? If you have any points of inspiration gifted to you from the chat, you can use those. But uh, if not, then yeah, 16 does not succeed. <clears throat> All right. In that case, um, would you like to do any movement or is that your turn? Um, oh, I just saw D Dead's message pop up. So I will roll once more. Yes. Okay, fantastic. Go ahead and roll. Can they consistently roll above a 10? <clears throat> nice. There we go! Yeah. Roll for that damage. Oh, please hurt. That's going to be sexy. Please hurt. That was some decent damage right there. Heck yeah. Nice. That is good damage. Well, I don't think you would have gotten sneak attack, though. Because you don't have any allies within five feet of him. Well, okay. Um, roll a stealth check for me real quick. Stealth, stealth, stealth. Stealth, Hold on, I got too many notifications in my screen. Oh, I've got a D4, too. All right. <clears throat> okay. Stop giving the DM. The Baron abides. All right, yeah. You, so you just kind of sneak off, and you duck behind that to kind of break line of sight, and you go out and shoot, and you catch him right in the shoulder, dealing a total of 14 damage, it looks like. Uh, roll two more D6 for me. You can go slash R space 2D6. No, I didn't like that. No. That's not liking that. Okay, so slash R space 2d6. I'll just go ahead and do it real quick. 
Okay, so that's going to be 14 plus 9 is going to be 23 points of damage. So very significant hit. <clears throat> As you just catch it, like, he's, like, coming over and he's got that chef's knife. And, like, he's sort of, like, just getting back up and you catch him right in the chest. And it doesn't look like it pierces too far, but you deliver a very considerable uh, hit against them. And with that, um, that is your turn, which brings us to Ashling. It is your turn. Uh, Guy Fieri looks pretty pissed. Uh, what are you going to do? Uh, I'm going to make sure that I have a good line of sight and move over a, a little bit closer onto the bridge. Excellent. And I'm going to use my crossbow and try to hit him right where he was hit before to kind of increase that damage a little bit further. Fantastic. Uh, roll to attack. You should be able to click like the crossbow on your character sheet and it, sh and it should roll. Okay, this is 19. 19? Yeah. That's uh, absolutely hits. Go ahead and, and uh, click where it says crossbow light and roll for damage. Eight damage. All right, solid. So you land another solid uh, hit against them as you take aim and loose a bolt that sinks into one of his uh, one of his legs, and it just like irritated goes down, grabs it, and rips it out as he continues walking forward, with a very menacing, flavorish aura about him. Is there anything else or any movement that you would like to do? Can I cast Ray of Sickness? I want to see if I I believe that is an action, so I don't think you can. Uh, let me see. Okay. Ray of Sickness is... Yep, one action. Um, so you can take an action, and if you have a spell that's a bonus action, you can do that. But otherwise, yeah. Okay, then uh, I think I'm done. Excellent. Um, so that's going to mean this guy is going to step forward. And since they can clearly see that little cobalt, he's going to take a shot at you. 16 does succeed, so let's roll for damage on that one. Oh, he catches you for 10 piercing. And 13 does not succeed, so you're just kind of there, and you just shot Guy Fieri, and you're feeling really cool right there, Rhyme. And then, like, BAM! You just get an arrow in the shoulder. Like, fuck! Oh! But then, like, you see them taking aim, and you just, like, duck behind the wall as it just, like, like, bounce us right off the ground where you were. Which leaves us to this guy, who's going to come up this way. And he's going to take a shot at Ashling. Seven does not succeed. Just kind of harmlessly goes well above your head. The 20, however, does succeed. And that will get you for eight points of piercing damage. Like just as you like just as you hit Guy Fieri, like it's almost like his minions like listen and respond to it and just start like volleying against you guys. However, as the counterattack is mounting, Cora, you have an opportunity to attack. What are you going to do? Let's see. I have been contemplating a couple of things, but I think I'm going to cast my thunderclap right here. Um all right. These three here. So they're going to take. I mean, they're going to make a con save. These three, and we'll see how much they get clapped for. All right. Um. So that is going to be, I believe, that's a con save. So let me roll that real quick. Three con saves. They all Ooh. succeed. Ah, these bitches. Well, at least they all get half down. So let's yeah. see what. Uh, let's see. Eight, 13 total, so half of that, seven. Okay. That looks like roll 20 favoritism to me, because that's 19, 20, 21 consecutively. I know, right? Just yeah, saying. Right. So as you, uh,. Conjure that spell and unleash it. You can see that it pretty clearly lands at the intended point of impact. Um, however, the three of them are very quick to respond and very hardy in constitution. And the spell 
doesn't quite seem to take the full effect that you would expect, but they do still appear damaged. Excellent. I kind of just want to make the face. <laughs> nice. All right, and uh, I believe that's your turn. Mm -hmm. Excellent. So this guy's going to come up. <clears throat> and they're going to take a shot at Lolly. 18 just succeeds against her uh, AC, so that's seven points. And Nat 1, just like, kind of like cuts his hand a little bit on the, uh, on the arrow and takes five points of piercing damage himself. You're right. And lastly, this one's going to come up. And seeing this big fucking thing here is going to start shooting at uh, the pterodactyl. 15 succeeds against your AC. Isn't the big pterodactyl thing? Pterodactyl. Like spelled with and the 12. Ah, uh, you know what, actually? Fuck off. That's going to be a 19. Fuck off. So they deal a total of 13 piercing damage as they volley a couple of arrows against you. And as all this is happening, we reach the end where, Gordon, it is your turn. What do you do? Uh, I see you getting too hot in the kitchen here, and I suggest you should probably just go off and die somewhere and leave the, book, the recipes all with us. I'm just going to move right there, and I'm going to stay there. <coughs> Excellent. So you're going to just uh, hold your place there? Yes. All right. So the scout here, he's going to... He's going to move down because he doesn't have a particularly good line of sight. He's going to go here and he's going to try to take a shot at Gordon. But I'm going to give you partial cover. 22 is still going to do it even with partial cover, however. So it gets you for six points of piercing damage. <clears throat> this is great. I'm having fun. Are you guys having fun? I'm loving this. No. <laughs> Stop having fun. And here we go. Then finally, he's back up. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm too close. <laughs> That'll be a 21 Brandon against Joe. Character. Fuck. Jesus. God oh dang! <laughs> oh so you made you made a boss for a third level players, right? Not fifth, sixth level players. Yeah, that's what I'm questioning. So, Joe, what's your max HP? It's twenty-two. <laughs> How much HP did you just have? No, I have 22 right now. I had max uh, 28. Oh, cool. Okay, so you're just down. No worries. So he just runs up and just downs you immediately. Shit. And he's going to take a swing at Kim, but with a 16 does not... Ah, uh, but I've got a D4. Why do you have a D4? Somebody get... Look! Chat. You guys Dang, have this. Dice he doesn't need. Just succeeds against her armor class, and he's going to... 33 points of slashing damage. Got it. <laughs> I think you're down. And that is going to be his turn. So, I turn. Lolly, I'm going to need you to do a death save. As I believe you're unconscious now. Yeah. Okay. When, it's constitution, right? Mm-hmm. 13. One success. Yes. 
Boggart, uh, it is once again your turn. Um, shit's getting bad really fast. It is. I should have brought some of the milkshakes with me. Like, open up now, pour milkshake in. Yeah, we... That would have... Would have probably helped us all. <laughs> but I didn't think of any either. We were like, hmm, these milkshakes are bomb. Let's leave them behind. <laughs> We all regret it later. <laughs> Mistakes were made. <laughs> Mistakes were definitely made. <laughs> okay, so nobody has died yet either. So the cool thing about 5th edition is one point of magical healing and you're back in the fight. So it's not like you're dead. Who, who has magical healing right now? <laughs> the only thing I, I, I have healing word... word. Yeah, healing word can get somebody back in the fight. But uh, Schmidt, alive. so what are you going to do? You're in a very clutch moment right now. <clears throat> yeah. Um, it's super hard. He makes the big ouch. He does. Um, <clears> hmm. <throat> They have quite the range. They've yes. got quite a bit of range. I think they have long bows. Yeah. Uh, if I might make a suggestion, I like, guess... now is not a time to pull punches. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I'm not pulling punches. I don't have a lot to throw at him at level three, so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, let me see. Let me measure that out again. So I need to go... All right, so I'm going to fly around him. Okay. If I can grab my... Oh, I don't have access to the token. Oh, one second. That you changed. There you go. Now you should. Aha, there we go. And I'm going to blast him with... Where's my spells at? The arms of Hadar. Fourteen. All right. Natural one. So I hit him with uh, I got six one one. Of course, of course. Might as well just be one one one. So I hit him for eight damage. Um, I would like you to roll that again. He nat he nat failed against it. So I I do I do spell crits here. That's how I do shit. Let me just uh, okay. So 12, so that's going to be 20 damage. He is looking pretty haggard after that, like, not bloodied, but he's taken some pretty good hits. He's hurting. <clears throat> oh, crap. I was going to... Hmm. What else you got? I had a bonus action that I was going to cast first, and I forgot. That's okay. I was going to hit him with Hex for the extra bonus damage. Let's just assume you did it. And um, what stat would you like to give him disadvantage on? Uh, strength. Excellent. A wise move, my friend. A wise move. And I'm going to mark him so that I can remember that he's got that. Let's give him this. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So just two more damage on the, on the hex. But it's every attack I hit him with for the duration of the spell. All right. And with that... Next up is Rhyme Pib. Alright, uh, being as shit's officially hit the fan, um, Rhyme's gonna pop out of his cover right over here, and I'm gonna use my gravel cower and beg. Uh, once per short rest, and actually can cower to strike foes. So. I'm just going to let this. I'm going to squeal again. And just like, yeah! 
not hurt. Ah. To draw guys' attention directly on me, and hopefully away from everybody else. So what's this ability called? Brawl, to cower, win. and beg. Once per short rest as an action, you can cower to distract foes until the end of your next turn. Allies gain advantage on attacks against enemies within 10 feet of you that can see. Okay, so everybody will have advantage against him. Yep. And I'm going to try one That's thing really here. really good, actually. Nice. And he looks directly at you. And he's like... Just whispers. Shut the front door. And that'll be your turn. Um, that brings us to <coughs> Ashling. It's your turn, and shit ain't good. Yeah. Um, I think it's time to fight fire with fire. I'm gonna cast fire bolt directly at him. Okay, um, you go ahead and roll, um, normally you take disadvantage when you're casting a ranged attack within five feet of something. In this case, I think we can just attack normally because he's so fucking big that I think that rule kind of goes out the window. Okay. You could be attacking the back then, which is ten feet away from Huh? Huh? Oh, that's awful. <laughs> oh, fuck diddly oh so. Literally... <laughs> just just roll it again. It's fine. Like I've never seen so many nat ones in a game. Roll for damage. I have. We saw a bunch of lizards that day. Okay. You catch him with a firebolt and <clears throat> he's just like, oh man oh. That was capital T tasty. <laughs> and uh if you'd like you can bonus action i think you i think you have healing word i i yes. pretty sure i saw that you word. if you cast that on joe you can make him uh or kim they can be conscious again okay yeah, i'm gonna cast this healing word for, for joe because i know he's out of it all right go ahead and uh okay he gets five points of healing now god willing i don't do your max HP plus five points of damage in the next attack, but we'll see how that goes. We'll see what happens. Because why not? All right, but uh, yeah, Joe is... Um, so Gordon, as everything went black after that massive attack, you just suddenly... <gasps> as your blurry vision comes back to you and you regain consciousness with a deep pained gasp. Next up are these guys. Um... They're going to go for the pterodactyl. 15 succeeds. They get you for 10. And then... They hit Guy Fieri for another 6. <laughs> As they just crit fumble and they just like... Hit him right in the back of the neck. He's... Ah! Can't like reach the arrow to get it out. Like, like those muscle guys who can't reach the... <laughs> and that's going to be a 19 to go for the pterodactyl. They get you for four. Okay. And 13, I think, just succeeds in your, against your armor class. So another six. How are you holding up? All those were on me? Uh-huh. Oh, well, I'm down now. Shit. Damn. Out our, was... our mimic dactyl. Yeah. So, that brings us to Cora. It is your turn, and things are not great. What are you going to do? Yeah, and I'm going to uh, I'm going to attack Guy here. Okay. I'm going to use command, so he needs to make a wisdom save. Eleven. You succeed. Oh, you're right. 
I tell him to grovel, so he falls prone until the end of his turn. Okay. He falls prone. And as he falls down into onto his knees, he just tears streaming out of his eyes says, This is money! And uh, your spell appears to successfully have him uh, down on the ground. Is there anything else you'd like to do? Uh, no, that'll be it for this turn. Excellent. So these guys are, you know, they... Yes, bitch, grovel for me. Yeah, they're gonna... Kind of go up here with a... He's going to try to attack at... Nope. Nope. Just launches a couple arrows, and this guy is going to... You know, this guy's going to just kind of start moving up here a little bit. As in that moment, Gordon, you are getting back up weekly. The fight is not going well, but you still have some fight left in you. What are you going to do? Our attack and uh, patch, correct? Yep. And you just got another D10 too. Oh, nice. And uh, go ahead and uh, roll again as you have advantage. That succeeds. Roll for uh, roll for damage. <coughs> okay. Another attack there. Roll for roll for damage. Big old critties. Is that did that? I think you need to roll another D six. Because it did yeah, it doesn't it look like it. Add, it didn't add his crit for some reason. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, well it's it's seven. And he's gonna say, I'm not done with you yet. And he's oh. gonna do action surge. Yeah, what, what do we do? Yell it to the heavens. <laughs> action surge! Yeah! <coughs> Fuck! Oh. Okay. Yeah. Roll for damage. Yeah. And I think we'll need another d6 in there yeah, again. Come on, D6, roll us something good. Hot damn. Are you better than one? It's true. Well, he's now bloodied. And you get one more attack because you action surged. He's over here groveling. I mean, you're just beating the heck out of his fucking head over here. Yeah. <laughs> what? What um, the 18 oh. does connect, so go ahead and roll for uh, damage on that. Seven more damage. Go to sleep, go to sleep, go to sleep, go to sleep. <laughs> Why won't you die? Five more damage, not seven. You <laughs> unleash this onslaught of attacks against Guy Fieri as he's groveling before you. And he is looking bloody and beaten, but still fighting. Would you like to move or stay where you're at? I'll, I'll yeah. stay where I'm at. I'll, ch I'll chant it. <laughs> Brave man. This guy's going to take a shot at Joe. 22 succeeds. Seven and points of piercing down. damage and you're down. <clears throat> so Guy Fieri is going to get back up. That's going to take half of his movement. I think just about everybody's down, right? Nearly. Got two people down. I'm still up. He's going to try to head down here. So. 
No, you didn't have a melee weapon equipped, so you can't take an attack. Technically, if you want, uh, Kara, you can do an unarmed attack with an attack of opportunity against Guy Fieri. You can punch him. Punch him in the nose. Check him around the schnoz. You can't me in the dick. <laughs> right. Uh, fortunately, it doesn't quite succeed. But he's going to attack. So that'll be a 17 to hit Rhyme Pib. Oh, that, um, that being said, I do have that D10 that I'm supposed to use. Which does bring it down to 16, which unfortunately still succeeds. 33 points of slashing. And I'm down. Alright. And he's going to just circle around and that will be his turn. So, that brings us to Kim. Can you please roll a death save for me? One success. Oh, thank goodness. Good job, Ben. Yay. And Schmidt, can you? That's one failure. Oh, no. You're not living. He's no. not dead yet, though. Not dead yet, he's not dead yet, but he's not living. I'm and with arrows. That, that means... Rhyme Pib, please roll a death saving throw. Very, I was very badly. Stand back up. That's one success. Excellent. Yay! Great. Which brings us to Ashling. Um, <clears throat> do you have any particular spells that might heal somebody, get them back in the fight, and or uh, something? Mm. I do have right now, I have the cantrip spell, the acid splash, I like Katie's question. We can't bring anybody back and just attack Guy. Yeah. Kill him. Get him. Kill the bitch ass. I'm gonna shoot Fireball again. Knocking down Peg. I hope he doesn't eat it this time. That was rude last time. <laughs> He's just rude. Alright. And yes, yes, that that's a yes. We can... <coughs> I think I can figure something out. Well, thank you guys for the bits. I appreciate that. Thank you for the thousand bits. Thank you for the hundred bits there, Demon. Appreciate uh, both of you very, very much. And uh, hold, hold, hold up, Kara. I think, uh, I think the audience is cooking up an ex machina for you guys. You know what? Tell you what we're going to do. You begin ruffling through your pack, desperately trying to find something, your spell components. <clears throat> and as you look in, you uh, find what looks like this like shining gem that's filled with some kind of sauce. And as you touch it, this incredible umami like f coats your palate. And as you breathe in the air, it's sweeter. And guy looks over and he's like, what, what's this flavor? 
Oh my god, that reminds me of the best breakfast sandwich I ever had once. But it's like breakfast, but but it's not. It's something else. What is this flavor? And the shining light goes out, and all of you unconscious people suddenly your palates are filled with this incredible flavor. It's unlike anything you've ever tasted. And you can hear the voice of June. I made something very special for you. But the voice grows distant in those next few moments. I'm going to bring each of you guys back up. We're effectively going to cast a mass healing word. You're all back conscious again with 18 points of health. And Guy Fieri is now stunned until the end of his next turn. But I'll say that, that the use of that was your action. All right. So these scouts, seeing everybody get back up, they're going to start popping shots off. Sorry. One doesn't work. Ignore that. The second one manages to get, it looks like Schmidt. No. That's going to be a disadvantage. It still still gets you. He just grazes you for four points of damage. This other guy is going to try to take a shot at Ashling. Mind you, Ashling, you also got healed for um, that much as well. So the mm -hmm. first one does get you for six points of damage. They fire another one. Fifteen does succeed. So they get you for eight points, but you've already healed for more than that anyway, so it doesn't matter too much. And... Cora, you've just come back from the power of X mocking a flavor. What are you going to do? You're muted. Yep. Womp womp. Womp womp. I'm going to use a um, poison spray and see if I can get him with that. So he needs to make a constitution. He does succeed. Dang. I'm going to take a five foot step up this way. Excellent. So that guy's going to take a... All night. So he takes a shot at Joe, but hits Guy Fieri. And ends up just kind of jamming his bow, breaking an arrow. And we're, we're just going to give him one attack for that, because that's a nat one and he should feel stupid. With two attacks directed at Gordon. Gordon just, like, gets up and just, like, the first one you just, like turn and it flies past you harmlessly the second one you actively swat away with your axe and right as soon as you do that you see an opportunity to attack what are you going to do gordon all right so i'm gonna move right here and then i'm just gonna unleash my breath weapon right on him all right, and I believe as he is stunned, he uh, automatically fails it, so just go ahead and roll. Eight points. Excellent. And, then... and I think that's your action. And I think because um, you can only attack with your offhand if your action is attacking with your main hand, so I think that might be all you've got. Unless you want to second wind. Which yeah. might not be a bad that's idea. What I was working out with second wind. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to do that. <laughs> Excellent. You restore 11 points of HP as you just draw in a deep breath, preparing yourself for further battle. Hopefully not much further, but we'll see. 
So these guys are going to attack at Joe. That is going to be a 19. They take 10 points of that right away again. Damn. I'm tired of me rolling so well. God. I'm tired of you killing Joe. Did he die? Yes. No. Yes. None of you have died. And Guy Fieri is stunned until the end of his turn. At which point... Lolly, you have regained consciousness and have tasted the most incredible thing you've ever experienced. What are you going to do? So, Lolly, after tasting one of the best tastes she's ever tasted in a while, is, is going to uh, use Misty Step and teleport to right here. Okay. Uh, also had dropped the crossbow and is going to attack with her with their flail. Okay. Uh, roll to attack with advantage. Yes. <clears throat> Excellent. That connects. Uh, roll for uh, roll for damage. Ten. And I want to use. Is it second wind to attack again? Or... Um, action surge. Action surge. Excellent. Action surge. Yeah. All right. Uh, roll to attack. Flail it up the meat. Ah. Well, you get another one. Come on, flail. Flail. Unless. Unless I want to use the, um, the inspiration that Katie gave me. I think it was. Absolutely. I think it was a ten. Go ahead and uh, roll that. Still not quite enough, unfortunately. Damn it. But uh, he's not holding on. Like, he's almost out of here. And that'll be... That'll be your turn as he is holding on by a thread. Um, so, Bogart. This is like the worst day of your life. And it's all because of this fucker. Literally the worst. Because all I did up until this point was cook. 50 years. <laughs> He's like, I'm just an old man trying to live my life, finding right. the, the secret of flavor. <laughs> I wanted to end my life with the secret of flavor, okay? So, uh, let me look at my spells real quick. Um, actions, that one. It doesn't say that I lose my form when I go unconscious, but I don't know for certain. It doesn't say in the descriptions. I would assume if it's a magical effect, most magical effects do end when you go unconscious. Yeah, that's what I thought. I was just trying to see if it clarified it in the spell description or not. <clears throat> so both of those have worn off, and now I'm just my old decrepit self. But he still has... No, Hex is not on there, is it? Oh, actually, I'm going to need you to roll several constitution saves because I forgot that Hex is... No, is Hex concentration? I think it is. Um, yeah, it's concentration. Yeah. I'm actually going to assume... Since you fell unconscious, let's just assume it ended. Yeah, I was going to say, I got hit multiple times in a row. I wouldn't have had time to really yeah. like, even think about concentration. So, that's fine. Um, I guess all I got left is, uh, Eldritch Blast, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to come back to my feet, get back to roll 20 here. Um, I'm going to cast, yeah, I think I might move up just a little bit, just swap my, I don't need this one anymore. Come back to me. Uh, I'm just going to move up to the wall and kind of lean against it. Holding myself up. Put a hand out and attempt another Elder's Blast at semi-close range and hope that it lands. All right. So wow. 20, 20. I actually 20. hit with an Elder's Blast. Yay. Oh, awesome. Nice. 
Roll for damage. damage. <laughs> okay, you blast and like large chunks of him just blast out from that. He is not long for this world. Take that, you wretched fuck. <laughs> as soon as that happens, I believe that's your turn. That's it. That's all I got. <sighs> At that moment, Rhyme Pib, you see the perfect opening to go in and attack. What are you going to do? Uh, after picking myself off and licking the dirt from my eyes, <laughs> I'm going to take my rapier and just rush forward, throw my whole weight behind this one thrust, hoping to put this rusty tip guy down. Use just the tip. All right. Title. <clears throat> Go ahead and uh, roll your attack. Is that your final answer? Uh, if you have any inspiration, I would highly suggest using them. I have one left, so I'll roll one more time. I'll take that. Of course, the fucking rogue crits. Roll for damage. Roll, and let's also add another 2d6 onto that. 18 damage. Nice. What happens? In the last final couple steps, I leap up with my little legs. And I just plunge that rapier right into his throat. And I can just feel the resistance give. And I slide right through. And with my weight still carrying me as he falls, I just break it off. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> I don't need this rapier anymore. I'll hold the broken rapier up and go... <laughs> and as he... <laughs> <laughs> he falls to his knees, his body weakening as he draws his final breath. His last words, barely more than an audible whisper. Capital T, tasty. Fuck you, flavor man. <laughs> In that moment, like, the kind of guards, like, all, like, exchange looks and just book it the fuck out of there. And there you see it, atop the altar, a strange, amorphous, illusory sort of magic emanating from there. And you know it without knowing, in a sense. What you gaze upon right now is the essence of flavor itself. What are you guys going to do? Gaius is defeated. Are you going to go and see what that is? Do you intend to depart and tell the others? How do you wish to proceed? Well, considering what the Muppets told us, probably wouldn't be wise for us to take it. We should probably just let them know that we've defeated the invaders that intended to take it. Yeah, we should agreed. That's a fine idea. I'm too tired for this anyways. It's, it's too powerful for any mortal hands. I even attempt to wield. Besides, I like my flavor just the way it is. Well said. Well said. Uh, Pib, uh, as he's picking through Guy's corpse for anything consumable, be it him A or... bunch of smoked pork belly. Like, an unreasonable amount. Tears of joy <clears throat> down this dog Call man's it. face. Oh, I need it. Uh, I he suggests me. that uh, I think we should destroy the path down here so none, none others may uh, attempt to alter this uh, sacred flavor. That's a great idea. And, uh, 
Yeah. And me and the other warlocks sit here just barrage Eldritch Bastes to, you know, destroy the entrance. I feel like one that would be really fun. <laughs> Absolutely, you can. I'd be down. Anybody? All right. Uh, let me just lean against this rock real quick. <laughs> you know, apparently leaning against the wall helped a lot, so. Let's yeah. <laughs> make yeah. you a makeshift wall. <laughs> Maybe I need a walker after all. <laughs> We'll build you a walker when we get back up to the, the Muppets. Are you ready? <laughs> All right, let's do it. Let's just, just throw a shit ton of them at him. <laughs> you whoopee. We did it. And so you um, unleash a barrage of magic, and through crumbling rock, <clears throat> the entrance both entrances to the ziggurat are sealed. Wait, how are we going to get out of here if we crumble? We can assume, we can assume that like you did it on the way out. <laughs> okay. No, 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 no. What do you think this through? What forethought did we put into this? <laughs> it's called the D it's called the DM throwing you a bone right now. Um Thank you, DM. Thank you, DM. It's my own it's my own catacombs down here. So <laughs> You uh, you return and inform the surviving Muppets of your victory. You've prevented Guy Fieri from claiming the power of flavor and the ability to alter the cognition of all mortal beings. The day is won. Flavor is protected. And from the ruins and ashes of Flavortown, the Muppets begin their rebuilding efforts. But as our tale draws to a close... Let me ask briefly, what do each of you do when this adventure is done? My stream will never hear the end of it. <laughs> Bogart's going to retire. He left the cloister to go on an adventure and help fellow chefs, and he's just accomplished the biggest quest uh, as an adventure and a chef at the same time that he could accomplish in his lifetime so he's going to spend his last days in in rest and relaxation Ashlyn is going to continue to travel the world to try to find new flavors and combinations excellent and Gordon is going to go stay with the Muppets and learn their way of cooking fantastic <laughs> Food. I love it. Lolly's gonna go. Lolly is just beginning in their adventure. They're gonna search this, like, go on quests to find more special flavors, like the one that uh, the Muppet had created. <coughs> I cannot remember. Rune? Rune? Zoom? Zoom? <laughs> Zoom, zoom. Uh, zoom? Zoom, thank you. I've created. Uh, Piv is going to stare out at the sky, running his hand along his chin as he feels a tuft of hair there. Uh, uh, <laughs> a lock of hair he had glued. His eyes oh, straightening God. out one more time as he goes, Ah, oh, I'd almost forgot. And then he's going to set off into the distance. And what about Cora? I mount my new butter knife on my wall. I'm going to spread it. <laughs> <laughs> I put that spreader on my wall for everybody to see. Oh, no. You saw me. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I continue to take my adventures, um, and um, influence the influence that I have 
um, globally to find new flavors and meet new interesting people. Good plan. Good plan. <clears throat> and so it was that each of you went your separate ways. But there were always the questions of some of the things that you saw and continued to see. Because even as you even as you gathered some of you to depart from Flavor Town, some of you to stay and to learn from the Muppets to discover their secrets. The strange sights, flickering bits of another reality seemed almost more prevalent. You'd look over and where the colorful stone and eccentric architecture of Flavor Town ended, there was cold steel. A strange chill lingering thick in the air, but only for a moment. But always those sights remained about, sticking with you even as far as when you journeyed. And it was the strangest thing that even as you all departed, you remembered each other of this time when you fought to save the power of flavor, the power, nay, of cognition itself from falling into the wrong hands. But there were little things that began to slip, began to drift away from your memories. But you all got to lead good lives as adventurers. To gain fame, renown, the secrets of flavor. <clears throat> and in particular, for Gordon, you learned much from the Muppets. In time, you actually perfected the next level of smoothie. A boba tea smoothie that actually had a full 15 course meal, all crammed into one. Oh my god. Nice. Yeah. The Muppets nicknamed it the real motherfucker. <laughs> Appropriately so. And so your story spread throughout many parts of the land. A heroic tale, curious tale by some. But uh Perhaps the most curious part of this tale was the part that happened a great distance away. Far into the skies, further out yet, there was a mass of cold steel, a ship circling the world. Upon it a being watched through a great lens affixed to a wall. The seventh cycle now. The seventh time this experiment had failed. No matter. More adventures would come. The secrets of flavor. Mortals couldn't resist it. And when they would succumb. More would be learned. The being strokes a beard. Of flailing tentacles. With a long wiry hand as it watches and prepared for the next experiment. Seven failures, but maybe the eighth simulation would be the one. Maybe. And with that, we draw an end to this tale. Thank you all for playing. Yeah. This was great. Thank you for having us. Absolutely. I hope that you all had fun. I know that was a bit of a close call. Um I was it when I balanced those encounters, I was like, oh okay, well this is really gonna push them. Oh, but they all have the chef feet, so they'll all make a bunch of food at a short rest. Oh fuck they didn't. <laughs> well, we kinda ran I was out like, of time. I was like, right. yeah. I didn't even think of that until um had mentioned the smoothies <laughs> We have that. Whoops. I was oh, not no. hit once. I am actually genuinely surprised that I was not hit once. 
You got so lucky. I just I just was over here lightning zapping and commanding people to do shit, and everyone's like, we're not worried about that one. Yeah, no, <laughs> not at all. Yeah, he's focused on killing Joe. Yeah. That one just shocked us with lightning and then made Guy fucking fall to his knees groveling, but she's not an issue. Yeah, no. <laughs> Hit that terror dactyl out of the sky, though. He's ugly. This guy. Yeah, that that thing's guy terrifying. That thing's terrifying. It's not doing anything, but kill it anyways. Kill it with fire. Somebody get fire. that ugly bulb. <laughs> <laughs> It's got two mouths. That one's eyes are funny. Get it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Why did Best you just Somebody murder yes. it. Yes. Rhyme Pib. Rhyme Pib. Rhyme Pib. Best character. Absolutely. I loved it. But yeah, I'm uh, proud of him for being my first D and D character to actually make it to a D and D session. <laughs> yeah, that was awesome. I think you all did exceptional. I threw some really rough shit at you guys, and you came out on top. Mm-hmm. Yay. Yeah, that was good. London hit the yeah. Yay. But, uh, you know, honestly, as long as you guys had fun, that's the only thing that I can hope for. So thank you very much for coming and playing, and thank you uh, to the people out there that opted to hang out with us and spend your Friday watching some peak D&D, saving Muppets from Guy Fieri. It was great. It was good times. But um, I'll be back tomorrow for my uh, regular game, Thicker Than Wine. It will be at uh, it, it'll be at eight thirty p.m. Uh, Pacific Standard Time tomorrow. So uh, if you enjoyed a little D and D, drop a follow. Swing on by tomorrow. I uh, appreciate the beep stopping by and uh, Derek Page. Thank you very much for the raid and for uh, introducing your community to mine. I appreciate it very very much. Um, oh, well, thank you so much for the follow. Oh, I know who that is. Thank you very much. <coughs> but, uh, yeah, guys, uh, I appreciate you all coming and playing tonight. Um, let's like, let's, do you, does anybody have a friend who's currently, uh, streaming? Should we go raid somebody? I've got nobody. I don't have anybody. Nope. I'm I know. Ella Ren? Ella Ren? What the heck? Let's raid Ella Ren. Always raid. I'm always raid. Yeah. All right. Actually, it's late. I've got to go too. So. Absolutely. Game, guys. Have a good night, guys. Right. And good night, guys. let's good go night. ahead and raid Ella Ren. No, our video is all jacked up, but that's okay. All right, my friends. Until next time. Stay safe, be well, and we'll see you here where the Baron abides. Have a good night.